Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Erin and today we're playing more Disco Elysium. Oh boy! <laughs> so we have quite a lot to discuss from the last episode. We did a lot and I can't believe I crammed everything into one episode. I kind of regret it, but it's fine. Man, I have a lot of feelings about the last episode. I will be talking for quite a long time this intro, so if you want to skip, I'll hopefully remember to leave a timestamp here or during the timeline somewhere. I don't know. Either way, I'm going to be talking for a while. Like I said, I just have so many feelings. So in the last episode, we had to do something that I did not want to do, which was confront Tommy and make him give up Ruby's keys to her Lori. And I didn't want to do that, but I just, I ran out of options, seriously, because I failed the check that I needed to pass with the racist guy and I was hoping to get it through him. So I didn't have any other choice. I'll touch on that more later, but I hope Tommy someday forgives me because it really hurt to betray him like that and make him give up his friend. I didn't want to do that at all and I still feel really bad about it. But he did give us the keys to Ruby's Lori. So we went over and inspected it. And it turns out she is definitely the one who is smuggling drugs between terminals into Jamrock. We confronted Titus with the information and we also let him know that we found a bunch of weird radios in her car, transmitters and stuff like that that we didn't really understand. Eventually Angus spoke up and he said that Ruby was building a pale emitter, which is a bit intimidating <laughs> sounding. I guess the pale in this game is normally referred to as like death or just darkness or the end of the world, etc. So the fact that she's building a pale emitter not good. So since we did that whole side quest for Joyce, we went back to her and we talked to her about what we found. Apparently Joyce, like we know, works for Wild Pines and she was sent out here to sort of diffuse the situation, I'm pretty sure, between the Wild Pines and the Harbor. I guess that didn't work out and they didn't really trust her anymore. I think I'm getting this wrong, but they sent out a group of mercenaries and one of them went undercover as a scab leader. So we now know that the scab leader was actually one of the mercenaries that worked in the same group as Ellis, the hangman. I can't believe I didn't even really think of that beforehand. I just, it just goes to show that literally every character that you meet in this game has some sort of depth to them, some sort of importance that you maybe don't realize until later on, until it's too late in my case. Turns out he's like the gunner of the group. So now this group of mercenaries who were following Ellis are now bloodthirsty and looking for revenge and eventually it's going to turn into them executing the people involved with the lynching. So I decided I really didn't have any other choice but to finally confront Ruby. We went into the cave system, is it a cave system? Underneath the Feld building and she was there and she had built this huge pale emitter, like we mentioned. And it was basically just like a conglomeration. Is that a word? Conglomeration? I don't know. The pale emitter was basically a bunch of radio frequencies all meshed together into one to emit this horrible like white noise that is like extremely painful so eventually ruby told us that she wasn't the one who suggested that they fake a lynching it was actually all clasier's idea so i'm just getting so many conflicting stories and it's so hard to keep it straight but now it seems like clasier was really the mastermind behind all this i don't know if she killed him but it definitely seemed like she isn't in as innocent as i originally thought ruby also mentioned that harry is uh, Pione, I think that's how you pronounce it, of La Puta Madre, which is a mob boss. <laughs> Apparently, everyone knows Harry as a corrupt cop. I hope it's not true. I don't really know what that means for the investigation if it is. It could just be something that she heard, like Harry's reputation. Maybe he's just a crazy enough guy to where you'd think he is helping out this mob boss. I don't know. I don't think Harry is a bad guy. Obviously, he's made some huge mistakes in his life and has really let himself go and turn to drinking, but I don't know if he's necessarily working for a mob boss. Eventually, we destroyed the pale emitter, and Ruby, who seemed like she was out of options, pointed the gun to her head and was about to kill herself. I am so thankful that I passed the check needed to save her. I basically just said, you know what, just walk away. Like, this isn't necessary, just walk away. So she lived. I almost ended the episode there but i did not so i went back without even thinking about it 
But it turns out the mercenary tribunal had already begun. Right outside of the ruling in rags were three mercenary agents, not two like we thought, there were three. And of course, Titus and his boys were outside arguing with them. And Elizabeth, the gardener, was also there. Well, I say gardener, but we know she's not gardener. <laughs> So they were ready to start executing the Hardy boys for what they did to their colonel, but obviously we couldn't let that happen, so we got in between them. This is where things get really crazy and <laughs> I cannot believe this happened to me. Okay, anyway, so we tried to de-escalate the situation, but they just weren't listening to us and I kept failing every single check. Eventually, Cortinier pointed his gun at Elizabeth. I failed the check that was meant to save her and she ended up getting shot. And unfortunately, she did not make it. And I felt so bad. I just feel so bad because I know I could have prevented that. And it was such a high chance for that check. And I still failed it. That kind of sent the Hardy boys into even more of a rage. And they wanted to just go at them. But I still tried to de-escalate things. Eventually, we ran out of options. And we shot Courtenier in the cheek. But it didn't kill him, apparently. This dude must have a face of steel or something, I don't know. But I can't believe I, f I passed the 28% check needed to shoot him, but I failed all the other ones. Anyway, so we shot him and that obviously escalated everything. Rude, I think. I keep pronouncing his name wrong, I don't know. The guy with the long hat on pointed his gun at Harry and Kim stepped in to try to save us. Now here's the thing, <laughs> at this moment, I had to pause the game and kind of reset my camera and everything. And when I unpaused it, my game crashed and I had to replay up until that point. It was so frustrating. I kept passing all the checks that I failed the first time, but obviously I had to reload and fail them again. It was such a pain in the ass. I cannot believe my game crashed. It hasn't crashed this whole series. And of course it crashed right at the most important point. Like I said, in the one that I reloaded, the one that I am sticking with, I dodged the shot and Kim aimed at Root. Now, I really like this scene a lot because the whole game, you know, you hear about how bad Kim's eyesight is, but when it counts, man, he pulls through. He ended up shooting Rude directly in the eye, so that was insane. Right as Kim shot Rude, DePaul I, I hope this is her name, took aim and shot at Kim, but she missed and she ended up hitting Glenn, one of the Hardy boys. And again, he didn't make it. Not that I wanted Glenn to die, but I would have rather he did than Kim, I'm just saying. So things are escalating more and more and eventually Courtenier gets up. Well, doesn't really get up, but he points the gun directly at Harry and we have a 3% chance of missing it. I told you this intro was gonna be really long. We have so much to talk about, holy crap. So Harry falls to the ground and is bleeding out and Kim rushes over and tries to stop the bleeding. He didn't realize that behind him, DePaul was pointing a gun at the back of his head. Kim was about to die if we didn't do something. I had a 97% chance of saving him by shouting out and warning him. Thank God we passed it. I didn't notice before in the moment, but one of the bonuses that I got um, during the check was that Kim trusted me and that Kim truly trusted me. And that, oh, <laughs> if I saw that in the moment, I think I would have started bawling my eyes out. We passed and Kim turned around and shot Paul in the head and killed her. So I guess he killed two people and I killed one. So we passed out from our wounds and eventually we woke up back in the hostel room, which is now had been cleaned up by Gart. I really like Gart. <laughs> He's such a swell dude. So two days had passed. So now our, we're on day eight. Kim told us everything that happened and it was a mess. We ended up getting, I believe, six people killed. I'm not sure if the mercenaries were counted in that, but I'm pretty sure they all died. A few of the Hardy Boys died as well, and of course, Elizabeth died. So quite a few casualties, and I'm kind of scared to talk to Titus because he lost a lot of men, and I feel really bad. Kim ended up getting hurt pretty bad as well. He has a concussion now, and he was kind of bruised up really badly. But even though he was hurt, he still took us back to the hostel room and took care of us, patched us up, uh, made sure our fever went down. He even had Gart unlock the room that connected the two of our rooms, so now we can go into Kim's room. So now all that remains, now that I have... <laughs> 
<laughs> this intro has been so long. I'm trying, I'm gonna try to cut it up into many pieces. I don't know what this episode has in store, but I am so excited to continue and see where it goes because the last episode was so much to handle. I think we covered pretty much everything. I'm sure we'll touch on more during the episode, but for now, I'm not gonna waste any more of your time. This has been so long. So yeah, let's not waste more time and let's get back in this game and see what happens next. All right, we're back. Hello, boys. Things were a little rough last time. Sorry for my super, super long intro. Holy crap. We just had a lot to talk about and a lot I wanted to cover, so, you know. The bathroom mirror has been wiped completely Oh, hi, clean. <laughs> I can You see the reflection of your face in the mirror, such as it. Hi. He's, uh, he's just chilling there. It's fine. Wait, no, open it. So this is Kim's room, like we already discussed. I don't think there's anything in his notes that I missed. I am sure neither of us feel solid enough to keep loitering in this room. Let's go. Yeah. We're both a little unsteady on our feet. <laughs> Kim has a concussion and I have been shot, but I am running around pretty well. I think it would have been funny if I had a limp. The fan stands still. Okay. Let's not pull on that. <laughs> Let's not test my luck. Jeez, I wonder how things are gonna be out here. All right. So, oh, hello. <laughs> Ouch, that leg hurts. Maybe if you don't run, it'll be okay. So do I just walk like this? Okay, hold on. I know I should look at Clausier's room, but inspect the window in Clausier's bedroom. I did already do that though. I guess we just have to do it again. <laughs> okay. Um. I really want to talk to Gart before I do anything. See if he's doing all right. Man must be stressed out. They're still playing that music. <laughs> oh God. No, is that? That's all that's left. No. Oh my God, Titus. I'm so sorry. Hey, dude. Are you alright? Oh, you're up. It's good to see you back on your feet. Did you like your room? I cleaned it for you. He is- he is a good guy, alright? Underneath all the sarcasm and the mean comments and stuff, he's a really- he's a solid dude. Um, he looks you over. I did, thank you. Big improvement. I could have used more work. After all, I just took a bullet for this place. You did? I was too distracted to notice. I did, thank you. You're welcome. I thought it would be nice for you to wake up in a clean place after you, let's be fair, defended this establishment <laughs> and its clientele from gunfire. Did I, though? I got a lot of people killed, dude. I give credit where credit is due, and that, sir, was a nice shot. I was watching until you hit him. Crawled inside, then. Bullets started flying. Anyway. <clears throat> he clears his throat. You know, Kim did a nice shot, too. He really wants you to realize that he was also on the balcony looking by. In the danger zone, so to say. I don't know why you were. I wish you a quick recovery. Also, you and your partner are staying here free now. This establishment supports cops. What? The stay is free, the drinks are not. I just <laughs> felt I needed to specify that. <laughs> That's fair. Wow. Thank you, Gart. Where'd everyone go? You know, the ones that aren't dead. Oh, you know, people don't tend to stick around after shootouts. Turns out they're not good for business. He looks around at the empty place. Uh, are you sure you can afford having us stay here for free, dude? What happened to the man with the sunglasses? Uh, okay, so I have to mention, when it happened, you were right out there on the balcony. <laughs> what happened to the man with the sunglasses? I don't remember everyone who comes here. And many people wear sunglasses inside lately. Must be a fad. Okay. <laughs> he kind of also reminds me of Snape. He reminds me of a mixture of Squidward and Snape. Okay. So I had to mention, when it happened, you were, you were right out there on the balcony. Yeah, I was. Yeah. That's because I'm a <laughs> bad ass. He nods, trying to remain aloof. It really took courage. Don't pick at him. Yeah, I guess you are a badass. If you say it as two different words like that, it sounds like there's something wrong with your ass. 
Oh, don't pick on him. Uh, just not stoically. I guess you are a badass. Yeah, I don't know. Clients were <laughs> panicking. And also, I guess I sort of found out that I don't give a shit if I die. He feels the need to explain himself. Damn, guard. He means it. It's not just boasting. It's something he discovered about himself. Stepping onto that balcony. Alright, thanks. No problem. They'll come back. They always do. He looks around at the empty establishment. Bye. Can I sing karaoke again? How's that? Oh, God. Kim wants to sing with me, too. Okay. Also, I realize... Yes? Um, so... When Kim talked about how Glenn took the shot for him, he, um... You know, he said the bullet was meant for me, but he got shot instead. And then Empathy came up and was like, this isn't the first time someone has been killed in this place. And I was thinking he mentioned having an old partner named Eyes. So, and said that he was like, didn't really want to bring him up. So I assume his old partner possibly died for him. So that's something to think about. wonder if we can um, what about me? ask him a secret now that he really trusts me. Tell me a secret. No. Please? Your brain said okay. the no. <laughs> It's like your... Okay. The lieutenant. Good. Nothing. That's all for now. All right. <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> Homosexual underground is still still going strong. Hey, can I talk to you? Okay, he's still just all about money, you know. Hey, are you all right? Seeing you approach, the bruised man raises his bear in welcome. I wanted to save his men. Crazy motherfucker. Didn't think you had that fury in you. But I guess I've misjudged a lot of people lately. He lets out a whistle. I guess he's not mad at me. That was one hell of a shot. Hell of a shot. The fucks did not expect that. He looks at you with unmistakable respect. I guess what I'm trying to say here is, thank you for intervening, fellas. That was mighty brave of you. He extends his hand. His hand is covered in bruises and half plastered. Still, this hulking lump of man is glad to be alive. Aww. This is big. It's as big of a thank you as Titus Hardy can muster under any circumstances. Wow, we've really come a long way with Titus, haven't we? Shake it. No need to thank me, just doing my job. Shake his hand and nod in silence. Don't shake. Look, I need to talk to you. Um, shake his head and nod. Now, how can I help you? His grip is strong and friendly. Dang, I did not think we would be going down this route with Titus, but I'm glad to see it. I'm sorry about the people you lost. Dio was old. I think he'd be pretty happy with the way he went. Never could imagine him withering away on a sickbed. His bruised face stiffens. But Lizzie and Angus, they were just stupid kids. Didn't realize the shit they got into before it was too late. I feel responsible for both. For all of them, really. Here it comes. The last one is the worst one. He only deals with it by drinking copious amounts of 8% beer. <laughs> An honest tactic. And effective. Shut up. And Glenn. Glenn was my friend. Best I've ever had. I love that crazy homo like my <sighs> own brother. We're all fucked without him. But what do you do? This job is shit. <laughs> he takes a sip of his beer. I don't really remember Glenn that much, but, man. Hold on, where's that shanky fella? Didn't he die as well? They were good people. I'm sorry it went like that. We were born in this world to die, it seems. Maybe there's redemption in that? At least it ends one day. This is getting dark. Let's talk about happy stuff. I mean, were they good people? <laughs> uh, Where's that shanky fella? Dennis. That poor little rat is dead, too. I always thought he'd run. But no, he stayed. 
Stupid, brave fella. He didn't like him. That only makes it worse. <laughs> I'm sorry it went like that. Well, yeah. Memento Mori. Right? Yeah, uh, totally, totally. What does that mean? It means you might die tomorrow. So live every day like it's your last. Ain't that right, fellas? I just think of Memento Mori, um, Death Parade, the anime. Horribly sad show. Absolutely. Today, I'm going to get drunk, eat good food, and bed a good looking guy. Because tomorrow, a motor carriage might run me over. I didn't like this guy. Did he have to be the one who survived? <laughs> oh, you might die of a heart failure. Or syphilis. I liked Eugene. Hey, hey. Fuck you for ruining a beautiful idea. <laughs> uh, what's gonna happen to the Hardy Boys now? I guess I'll take a closer look at our union members. There's bound to be some ambitious fellows there who'd love nothing more than advancing social democracy by busting some heads. Might even ask Tibbs if he's tired of replacing Windows, and maybe wants to have some fun with his brother. Anyway, don't you worry. As long as Titus Hardy's standing, there will be Hardy Boys. <laughs> Good for you, dude. Do you know what happened to Clausier? Don't know. Don't care. I'll be glad if I never see that fucking woman again. Even after all that hell, he's still bitter about her? I mean, I'm kind of bitter. <laughs> Titus, after all we've been through, level with me. You really liked her, didn't you? Same here, man. Okay, got it. You really liked her, didn't you? Nope. He did. Yeah, same here, man. Okay, got it. He nods and takes another sip of whiskey. I thought he was drinking beer. <laughs> His clenched jaw says otherwise. If anything, it's another score for him to settle one day. It'll have to wait for now. Any idea what I should do now? Judging by the sight of you, I'd suggest crawling into bed with a bottle of whiskey in one hand and a big tit in the other. <laughs> I read that before he said it. He looks at your bandages. Yeah. Go pay Monica visiting Jandro. She's got a knack for making men forget about their worries. Biggest pair of milk girls in all Rebacho. Okay, dude. Now, yeah. you both look like you could use some feminine company right now. Thank you for your advice, Eugene, and you too, Alain. I do always appreciate a good use of the expression, milkers. <laughs> Whenever Kim says stuff like that, it throws me off so bad. You're welcome, Bina Clard. You're all right in my book. Really? Titus's response is completely unironic. Pretty sure Kim's was sarcastic, though. So long, fellas. Be good so I don't have to come back here again. Take care, coppers. You two look after yourselves now. Death passed on you today. But men don't get that lucky twice. He says with a warm smile. Copo loco. And the... Uh, ha. Huh. Normal cop, I guess. Good luck in Shamrock. Scars made the best tattoos, they say. He nods to you and then to the lieutenant. Thanks for getting involved, guys. Not a lot of cops would step into that line of fire, but you did. And if you ever feel like the uniform is holding you back, I've got a few vacancies. You'd make <laughs> one hard, hardy boy, copper. <laughs> and Titus Hardy himself would make a good officer. That man was born to lead. Uh, he's a bit hot-headed for that, I think, but... RCM could really use a man like you, Titus. Think about it. I will, Capo. That's a promise. Now scoot, because the Hardy boys got some mourning and drinking to do. He puts his can down. Take it easy on the drink. The danger has not passed. This town needs you on your feet. Good point, Bino Clard. We'll keep the vol under 12% tonight. He hardly looks at his beer. <laughs> All right. What's she got hiding in here? Looks like she lost something on the table. Next to the stack of bills, you see a note. A few lines jotted down in large, uneven handwriting just as the writer was about to rush out the door. 
I'm sorry. I fucked everyone over. P.S. I didn't kill him. P.P.S. Gift upstairs. A gift. The lieutenant turns to the staircase suspiciously, looking for any signs of another presence in the shadows above. What could this gift be? I am not drawing my gun. Yet. But I don't like gifts. <laughs> he says he's not, but his hand moves instinctively toward his holster as he studies the note. Just don't walk into another radio trap, okay? <laughs> okay. Relax. Not everyone is out to trap you. <laughs> also, another thing that I really liked during that whole tribunal thing was that the skills were actually working together for once during that whole section. They were barely arguing because normally they kind of bicker back and forth with each other and it's just really funny that in when it counts, you know, they, they had my back, so. Seems like she left in a hurry. It's hardly surprising. Yeah. Should we take the the drugs that she had, or did she already take it? The medicine cabinet is empty. Oh, yeah. Not even a toothbrush. Pity. I was kind of hoping the gift would be in here. I always took you for more of a drunk than a chemical abuser, <laughs> Lieutenant Hefreiter. Should we go? Oh. <laughs> well, he didn't mean it like that. She's really cleaned this out. Mm-hmm. She certainly had her priorities straight when she was packing. Lieutenant nods. All right. Upstairs we go. She really did screw everyone over. All right. Whoa. Where's a string? Is that where the bullet came from? She's showing us? A red thread made of nylon. It leads out of the room and onto the roof. Well, hold on. Let's inspect the window first. You see the same two neon lit <laughs> shapes. A man and a woman. Only now a red thread bisects the room, pointing from the antenna outside to the cupboard on the wall. So were there two shots that took place or were we just really off with the trajectory? This is ballistics. She's left a trajectory for us. Lieutenant tests the thread with his fingers. Drawn taut, it rebounds instantly. A ray of backward motion explodes from his mouth to the roof outside, A prime, to then widen into a radius of locations in Martinez, B prime, B double prime, and B triple prime. Where does the thread lead? It suggests the bullet came from the extreme upper quadrant of possible angles, from a point beyond the roof. B triple prime, the island in the bay. Huh, so it did come from there. Is she trying to tell us that the shot came from the islet? Unless she thinks the perpetrator was standing on the ring antenna. That is where the thread seems to point. He nods. Is she trying to tell us? Okay, I already said that. There are ruins on that islet. A sunken sea fort. I saw it through the coin operated viewer. I remember. He looks out to the window onto the bay. How did she know how to do this? She was there that night. She would have known precisely where the bullet hole was in the glass. Hmm. This does make me view Clausier a little differently because she's trying to help us? I just don't think I should be fooled again. I don't know. It also looks like there may be more to her skill set than we know. The question is, should we trust her? Of course we don't trust her. This is her way of saying she's sorry. I just don't know. I think she's trying to say sorry with this. I find that hard to believe. But at this point, what difference does it make? I don't know, why else should she leave that? This is also, a, oh god, a location we have yet to rule out. So it is. For a second he seems... tired. He has a concussion. You seem unenthusiastic. Maybe we need to go to the island? Yeah, that's not gonna work. There must be something else we've missed. You seem unenthusiastic. I just haven't gotten a lot of sleep these past few days. He doesn't really believe this will yield anything. It's okay, Kim. Maybe we need to go to the island? <sighs> <sighs> The wind blows in from the open window. The lieutenant's eyes looking into the cold distance across the water. There, across the grey water, amidst crumbling concrete, a birch tree, and the half-sunken ruins of a flak tower. 
It's like, we gotta go. I remember an anti-aircraft gun, or the ruins of one, on the island from the coin-operated viewer. Could be the makings of a sniper's nest. He nods. Why not? Military fortifications are made for that kind of thing. Kim, let's go to the fucking island. Go. I'm going to the island. Are you in? Actually, yeah, let's not go to the island. Let's go to the fucking island. Okay, let's go to the fucking island. <laughs> he takes a second to gather himself, then says. How do we get there? Joyce Messier had her sloop, but she's gone. Oh, yeah. Lily Lillianne, the net picker. She's tarring her boat. Ah, yes, of course. The village. Let's go. All right. Let's go. He doesn't seem that enthusiastic, but it's fine. We have a lead. Oh, wow. Okay. This red is tied to the antenna. Hmm. It's like there's not much else. The same small, heavy door. No lock in sight. <sighs> I really want to get in that door. Physical instrument, heroic. So I can't level up that, but can I drink again? <laughs> there. <sighs> now can I try? The same small. Shit. And that doesn't let me. Uh. Huh. I'll have to do it some other way. All right. All right. I fast traveled out here. Hey. <laughs> Our tenant, the policeman. I hope the waves don't keep you up at night. What can I help you with? I got shot! <laughs> I... Even I can see that. I told you not to bring your trouble with you, policeman. We've got troubles of our own here. Though I suppose you took the worst of it. Turns out you were your own ill omen. <laughs> the woman chuckles to herself. This is no time for jokes. Can't you see I'm in pain? I guess you were right. The men with guns were coming after me. Coming for me after all. I'm not sure those were the loss of the men with guns either. She nods. There are always more coming for your kind, officer. She nods. <laughs> then we'll be ready for them. Okay. Well, actually, let's not do that yet. Let's go back here. I think I still want to... Oh, shit. What does that mean? Unsure? I can't pronounce any of that. What the hell? What does it say? The graffito has been painted Damn, over the traces the of the fight that took place here. It smells of blood and heavy fuel oil. Oh, one day I will return to your side. This was Cindy the Skull. Looks like Cindy the Skull finally found the words to her masterpiece. The lieutenant crouches, touching the fuel oil with his finger. Looks like it, yes. This is still fresh. It wasn't here yesterday. I smell heavy fuel oil. And blood. Some of it is even yours. Oh. Heavy fuel oil. Isn't that... Flammable. <laughs> no, 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 no. Bad idea. <laughs> what are you trying to imply, fingers? You could buy some smokes, light up a ciggy and throw it in there. You know, just to see what happens. See if it's flammable. It's better that way. Safer. No, I don't think that's a good idea. Okay, well... <laughs> let's, um... See if Kuno's around. I don't know if I want to go out to the islet just yet. Hey, Kuno. Everyone says you started crying in the middle of a firefight and then bled like a pig. I guess that was cool. He shrugs. Who's saying that? People? They say you'd kind of died for a moment. That you let your shit out already, but then came back. So I guess that's what's cool now. <laughs> Just don't think because you got half your dick shot off and you're an invalid now. Kuno's going to treat you different. Thanks, Kuno. Kuno doesn't reward weakness. 
It's business as usual with Kuno. Kuno's cold like that. He says, looking at your pathetic limp. Feels good for some reason. Thanks, Kuno. Watch out, pig. It's a dangerous world out there. But Kuno's got his eyes on you. What's that supposed to mean? Who knows? Kuno starts doing that I got my eyes on you gesture repeatedly. Okay. Kuno's got my back. I wonder what it looks like out over here. Oh, can I talk to you? Do you still hate me? I'm so sorry. My man, you're alive. Almost. Kind of. Sort of alive? He assesses the situation. Okay, he's talking to me. That's a start. Alive and limping. I've been better. Hurts like hell, man. Alive and limping. Man, what a day. I missed out on most of the action, but I heard it was quite the encounter. Had a strong sense of finality to it. He nods softly. So what's next? You guys heading back to Jamrock now? Talk is local union muscle were behind it all. I'd reckon the case is closed, even if it kind of turned into a shit show. Yeah, the case seems kind of done. Gonna check on a few last things. I'm still looking around. Loose threads to tie up. It wasn't the local union muscle, by the way. Hey, that's just what I heard. Old wives' tale. So, what next? I'm still looking around. Good luck with that, my man. Ain't easy being you, but hey, you're still breathing, right? By the way, you're not angry with me anymore? Fuck it. I'm a bad guy now. <laughs> There's things more important than holding a grudge. It's okay. You've been through enough. Oh, Tommy. We are what we are. And you're a cop. Right. A few questions before I go, then. Shoot. <laughs> Sorry, man. Didn't mean it like <laughs> that. Ask away. He chuckles all of a sudden. I met the lady driver on my investigation. She's called Ruby. Okay. He seems a little apprehensive. Is it wise to share information about the case like this, sire? The lieutenant throws you a quick glance. Sorry. What are you doing? Yeah, that's it. Can't share anymore. <laughs> that's probably for the best. You keep your job to yourself. With a job like yours, you have to. Okay, bye. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Yeah, it's probably not a good idea to be sure and all that. Sorry. Ah, oh, the racist dude is gone. Boo-hoo. Oh. Dang. Looks like even Measurehead isn't up there. I wonder if I can talk to Manana. Hey, man. The boy Adero stares at you with respect, then gestures towards the trickles of blood <laughs> adorning your clothes. Danger comes with the boy Adero lifestyle, right? Yeah, I got shot. No big deal. Hurts like it really hurts, Manana. Pain. That's what you, your strike brought upon us. I got shot. No big deal. Yet you live. It calls back to an older era where this was commonplace. You have a true boyadero heart. He nods approvingly. Right, so where is everyone? Hiding, gathering themselves. The harbor's in full lockdown, friend. No getting in or out for the time being. You can't help me get inside? No, man. Not today. Today is war. He says it matter-of-factly, like it's no big deal. What's gonna happen next? Time will tell. I'll tell Everard you drop by. I'm sure he'll be glad. He gives you a small wink. What, what will you be doing now? I'll be okay here, doing lookout. Quite the sight, aren't they? Getting to like that red I am. He surveys the red flag straight from the harbor gates. Don't worry about me. I live to alleviate the worries of our brothers. See if any insane killers turn up. Then I'll run. And live. I'm sure you'll do good. Try not to get shot, eh? I'm sure I'll be luckier than you, friend. His grin is as wide as a desert. It's kind of funny, like, talking to all these people, because it really feels like I gained friendships. It really makes me wonder how much of this game is left. I'm kind of stressed. Alright. Let's see. Inside, you see a set of steering levers. Oh. Pick up the radio. This is Precinct 57. How may I assist you? <laughs> Precinct 57, we've been attacked. I repeat, Lieutenant Kim Kitsuragi and... Something is wrong. Only static hisses through the speaker. Hello? No reply. Only the mindless drone of static crawling through the air. It's been this way for a while now. 
My guess is the union is listening in on our conversations and jamming outward communications to protect themselves from Cronel. Huh. It only happens when someone mentions the attack. The rest is unaffected. Our best bet is to carry on like nothing happened. That is, if we don't want us cut off the grid completely. Isn't that dangerous? No more dangerous than stepping between three armed mercenaries and eight union men, I hope. He glances over his shoulder. I don't like it either, but that's the way it is. The street seems safe enough to me. If anything, taking out the mercs made things calmer. For now. He flicks off the radio, silence. You can try calling again. Just don't mention the tribunal. And remember, they are listening in. They're shutting you up. Silencing you. Don't fucking drop your guard. So should everything I... Everything sounds okay. No drumbeat of total war yet. If anything, everything sounds too okay. In the cabin, you see... A this is Precinct 57. How may I assist so you? So should I... Ask about the whole Laputa Maje thing? Okay. Four, come in. Uh, fireworker. <laughs> Over. I guess I'll ask. Jules, I've heard that some people think of me as a Laputa Maje peony. Do you think I'm corrupted? Ten four, sir. Uh, well, there's been some talk, sir. There's a pause as he seems to mull it over behind his enormous radio microphone. Some talk? What does it even mean there's been some talk? Do you think I'm corrupted or not? Does it mean people know that I'm a dirty cop? Because I am. I'm the dirtiest, most dangerous cop in rubbish hole. My reputation precedes me. I just want you to know that I would never do anything like that. I'm not taking bribes, Jules. I only meant that there's been some talk in the station, that's all. But there are always some talk in the station. You know how officers in Jamrock are. But then again, some of us truly are on the take. It's unfortunate. Over. Alright. Roger that. 10-10. Ten, ten, over and out. Well, that didn't really help me out. Something I wanted to do was actually use this phone again. It's only 10 cents, why not? You pick up the handset. There's a tone. The machine is operable. Put 10 cents in and dial random number. Calling. 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 <laughs> Still calling. Thank you. Still calling. Stop calling me, man. Someone picks up. The voice on the other end is slightly hysterical. I'll get you your money, alright? I just need to tonight. Let me work. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry, wrong number. <laughs> uh, who is this? Yes, but a slight change of plans. I want this delivery to the whirling and rags, my Martinez. We could all be a bit kinder to each other, don't you think? Consider your debt paid, my friend. You seem to be in some sort of trouble. Maybe I can help you. I'm a police officer. I want this delivery to the whirling and rags. That is... I, um... Uh... Hey, you're not Tethys. Screw you, and don't ever call here again. You're fucking with some serious people. Okay. Disconnect, Tone. Fine. <clears throat> a single <clears throat> lets you know the lieutenant is ready to move on. Okay, well, you'll have to wait a second. I want to call another... <laughs> call <me. laughs> This is a stupid idea. I'm tired. A man answers fast this time. His voice is hoarse from cigarettes. You hear typing in the background. Sounds like he hasn't talked to anyone in quite a while. What are you tired of? I'm tired too. So anything I can do to help you, I'm with the police. There is nothing. The man disappears with a sigh. You do not hear the customary disconnect tone. Just silence in the handset. The machine is still waiting for you to dial a number. Seems like it did not have time to swallow the coin. This sometimes happens. Lucky you. The call went too fast for the payphone to register. You can still make a new one without paying. Dial a random number with your eyes closed. You close your eyes and put your index finger on the rotary dial. Then pull down on the number. Then move one up. And repeat the motion. Twice. Strange. This is not how you started before. Wait, what did I just do? You dialed zero zero one. This is not the area code of Revershaw. It is another destination on another Isola. 
Some far-off nation-state. Some memory from my past. Keep dialing. 414447. The rotary dial feels cold from the sea air. Keep dialing. 1117361. Your fingers keep moving like a spider every time the ring rotates back with a little ring of metal, like a bell tolling. There's more? Yes. 451-67451. You are going deeper now, into some unknown place, far away from this island of matter and its telecommunication networks. Finish it. 451. You have dialed God knows how many numbers. The headset has been waiting silently to relay a signal. Surely nothing can come of this, you think. But it does. A connection. An ultra-long distance call. Your air fills with a crackle. The wash of a strange ocean full of white noise. A little bird starts ringing in there. Not like the local calling tone before. No, a small ring in a cage of distortion. Far away. A distant network of phones. Calling. Calling in the night. The saddest sound in the world. <laughs> Both pitiful and terrifying, you feel your pulse rising with each ring. Calling still. My ex? Ringing by the bedside of a dark but capacious apartment with long windows. <laughs> you know this to be true. It's obvious before I go on. It's obvious that whatever happened, um, she ended up leaving him, Harry. And I think that kind of started... The downward spiral of him drinking and drinking more and drinking himself to death and losing his memory because of it and um i think maybe he already had a drinking problem and it just kind of set her over the edge and that made his drinking problem worse i don't know what caused her to leave exactly but huh the handset starts slipping from your sweaty palm your breathing is heavy Long windows, how do I know that? You just do. And you know it is going to hurt. <laughs> Impossible, hang it up. Kim? The lieutenant is too <laughs> far away to hear your yelp. The sea wind blows. Let it call more. Calling. 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 Calling still. Then the ocean breaks. Out of the depths, a woman's voice emerges, small, the dearest thing you've ever heard. Hello? Oh shit, she sounds sleepy. <sighs> Hello? I want to die. Who is this? I can tell you know who I am. I have a secret plan with to win mankind 3,000 years of peace on this planet. I had to be ominously vague. Your voice is so beautiful. Goodbye. Oh, look at how he's standing. I just noticed that. Hello. <sighs> she hums, her voice warm from sleep. Who is this? Who is this? Dora. Who is this? The connection is bad. She's still confused. Dora. The name feels like a gift. A gift that was meant for you. To make it possible to live and fight in the distorted distance you hear someone turning next to her bed springs rattle oh. don't react whatever you do don't react to that last thing is someone there don't react it doesn't matter if you react or not you still think you hear a man's voice in the background it's covered in pain and white noise Oh, Harry. I guess I'll proceed. You're not ominous, Harry. You're drunk. Shit. You only have two, maybe three things left to say before the change runs out. Harry, how do you know my name? Harry, who's Harry? Are you sleeping with him? I'm also Harry. <laughs> I'm not drunk. Okay, I'm drunk. What does it matter? I'm still me. I'm not drunk. I'm high. I'm not drunk or high. I'm just hurt. Why does it hurt to talk to you? Oh, God. 
There's silence. It's heavy as tin. The white noise howls. Hey. Ooh, are you there? <laughs> Say nothing. Hey. Do you know what time it is? It's so late here. She looks like she's looking for a clock on the nightstand. It's four o'clock, Harry. I need to wake up in two hours. Do you want to party? <laughs> I want to talk about me. Who am I? You sound like you know me. Where are you? You sound like you're in another world. Where are you going in two hours? I'm the law. I'm a detective. I'm doing a case. There's a hangman. This is such a bad idea. You sound like you know me. What do you want to talk about that we haven't talked about already? This is bad. You feel your right hand on the handset crimping up with pain. Where are you? I'm in Morova. Sleeping. My heart hurts. I'm gonna have a heart attack. Where are you going in two hours? To work. Where? The academy. Where I work. The academy? That sounds better than my job. I'm happy. My job is sad and terrible. It has dead bodies in it. Pff, academy. My job is real. It sounds better than my job. I'm happy. No response. Only Shit. a sigh. The connection crackles like burning paper. What are you doing to yourself right now? I'm making a funny prank call. Catastrophic damage. I don't know, I don't understand what's happening. You need to stop. Harry, you're killing yourself. Oh gosh, should I keep talking? I shouldn't ask that. My heart hurts. Oh no, please stop. Please, let's just hang up. I am the law, I'm a detective, I'm doing a case. She does not answer anymore. I'm gonna solve it. It doesn't matter. This case doesn't matter. None of it matters. Not anymore. Can you help me solve it? I need to solve it. They won't take me back if I don't. I'm gonna solve it. Harry. Disconnect tone. The machine ran out of money. Shit. Uh, should I dial it again? You dial the number again. 26 pulls of the rotary dial. The machine eats the coin, and a terrifying ocean of distance rustles in your ear. This is such a bad idea. In the middle of it, a familiar ring. Small, distorted, calling, calling. What a call. Calling. It looks like she doesn't want to pick it up, Harry. Stop scaring her. Why? Come on, you know why. Hang up. The headset lands in the cradle. <sighs> that was horribly sad. I feel so bad. But he, he's right, I shouldn't scare her. I guess it's time to go. Oh shit, it's all ready for me. Hi. Officer, what happened? You're limping. Why are you limping? You look terrible. She sounds almost disappointed with you. Reprimanding you for falling and hurting your knee. She sounds worried to me. You seem angry, why? I got shot in the foot. It was pretty badass. You would have liked it. Some people hurt me. I'll talk to you about something else, your boat. You seem angry, why? Look at you, you can barely walk. It's nothing. Doesn't look like nothing. Looks like you've got banged up real good. What happened to you anyway? We heard gunshots from the town. They were closer than usual. There was an exchange of fire on the Rue de saint Guilaine. It's nothing to be worried about, madame. You should see the other guys. Two dead, one in the hospital. I have a question for you. Of course. <laughs> Can I help you with something? We need to get to that island. That won't be a problem. It's wind still and the tar just dried. We've got two days of relative sunshine ahead. She points to their skiff next to the jetty. Can we borrow your boat? Two days of sunshine? Sunshine? I just got a bacterial infection. What's on the island? I saw some kind of ruins through the binoculars. Hmm. Used to be some kind of fortification there before the war. For the communards. An anti-aircraft gun, I think. Bombed to bits in the landing. I haven't been there myself. Always steered clear of it. 
hasn't been there herself. Who has then? Two days of sunshine? I just got a bacterial infection. I'm sad to hear that. Take care of that with ether, will you? Don't get too many RCM men round here. Be sad to lose the first one. That's cool. You boast in your bacterial <laughs> infection like that. Thanks. Um, you said you haven't been there yourself. Who has then, if not you? My husband used to drink there. Him and his drinking buddies. Always seemed like a bad place to drink to me. People died there during the landing, you know. My mother told me. The kids sometimes go there too. I know they do, on rafts. I tell them not to, but they bring back old bullet casings and such. Jeez, <laughs> which kids? The twins. Mm. God forbid they bring the girl along on some rickety barge. She points to the two kids playing on the concrete yard. Can we maybe ask your twins about that place before we go? Would that be alright? Be my guest. They have a strange way of talking. See if you can get anything useful out of them. <laughs> I seldom do. Is there anything else I should know about getting there? Well, most of it's sunken. Underwater. That means concrete underwater. Cut your boat if you're not careful. Be sure to enter from the south side. Water's deep there. Aye, aye, Captain. <laughs> Can we borrow your boat? If you promise to bring it back. And no scraping the hull. I just got it nice and yellow. And no drinking on the boat. And no joyriding either. Her eyes narrow. Of course, ma'am. It's only for a day or two. Official police business. Right. Aye. She nods, nodding along attentively. The crow's feet disappear from the corners of her eyes as she smiles at you. Thank you. We'll use your skiff to get there then. Please be conservative with the fuel, will you? Just filled her up, but it's a small tank. All right. See ya. Thanks, girl. She's pretty cool. Let's talk to the twins then. Hey, guys. The scruffy-haired little boy kicks a stone while the other watches him do it. Okay, kids, you've been to that island, right? On that island. That's so cute. The one who's busy kicking his stones points to the bay. Yes, that one. I need to know what's there. That's, um, nothing. It's just a sea fort and some plants. You can take a raft there. It's great. The boy pauses to think with his fingers in his mouth. And, and we make a fire. We make a, we make a fire. The other one butts in. Mm-hmm. Gather the sticks for the fire. And bullets. Or oh, not real bullets. Empty bullets. His brother nods. Bullet shells. There are a lot of them left over from the war. But <laughs> this could be important. Wait, you mean shells? I don't know what they are. Mm-hmm. Not in agreement. What then? They're alive. The fire guy comes and asks us to put the fire out. They must mean a human being on that island, but it's cut off. Someone lives on the island? You mentioned something about lights. Your father used to go to that island too, didn't he? Um, someone lives on the island? No. The boy answers, shaking his head ve vehemently. Yes. His brother looks at him, then you. Let's go with yes. Lieutenant raises his eyebrows and whips out his notebook. Why is he the fire guy? Because, because... The boy pauses to think. Because he asks to put the fire out. The other ex explains. Why does he ask you to put the fire out? Um, I don't know. He doesn't like it. He doesn't like people to be there. You shouldn't go. Yes. The other one adds, laconically, standing with his hands glued to his sides like a little tin soldier. You mentioned something about lights? I... I don't know. Starts one of them. It's hard to tell which one now. Did you mean there are electrical lights? He points to the street light. Um, yes. The boy looks at his toes. They have no idea what they're talking about. Is there anything else you could tell me about this guy? Age? Does he live there? No, he doesn't live there. I don't think. No, he lives there. Been there twice, two times. The other nods. Uh, he doesn't live there. He isn't there sometimes. The first one pauses to think, then comes to some kind of conclusion. Anything else? 
What does this guy look like? I don't know. They say in unison. Unison. How come? We, we ran. He just yelled. We shouldn't be there. Interesting. Your father used to go to the island too, didn't he? Our father killed himself. Don't say that. He didn't. His brother punches him. The boy's eyes well up like he's about to start crying. Your father did not kill himself. He killed himself, all right. Say nothing. He didn't kill himself. I don't know. The boy who made the claims finds himself unsure of it. He looks around. Doesn't even have anything to do with this, you. Father is in the fire time. <laughs> the two things are unconnected. Your question didn't make sense. Sorry. Is that all you know? Is there anything more you can tell me about the island? There's a... Uh... The boy says, rubbing his eyes, it's clear he has no intention of finishing that sentence. Lights, fire guy. We should check up on that island. Lieutenant looks at you. Alright, I guess it's time to go. I'm kind of nervous. A skiff with a small steering engine in the back floats on the calm mirror of the sea. Its two seats are empty. Once you get in, that's it. One pull of the starter handle and you're off into the bay. A strange trepidation comes over you. Are you sure you want to go now? <sighs> I'm sure I didn't get everything, but I think it's time. Have you made all the necessary preparations? Closed all your accounts? Remember what the net picker said. It's a small tank. You won't be going back and forth on this. <laughs> you take the engine, Kim. I'll hold the boom box. Get in right to the island. I'll hold the boom box. What? What's what? How else do we blast that FM on our way to the island? You heard me. Don't make me repeat myself. How else do we blast that FM on our way to the island? Fine. Let's blast sad FM then. He gives you a resigned shrug. Sad FM is a radio station specializing in sad, slow rock songs. You seem to know its frequency by heart. Okay. Nice. <laughs> skiff floats. What, have you remember what the net Get in said? and ride. Oh, my boombox disappeared. <laughs> oh my god. That's amazing. I'm really nervous, actually. So cool. <laughs> Don't want to interrupt it.
<laughs> the boat comes to a slow stop. The lieutenant turns the engine off. Then there's silence. That was such a cool scene. I loved how that song kind of had like motifs from all the different songs in the game so far. I really like that. In the silence, a sputter of wings. A flock of quails takes off in a distance. Let's go. He whispers. I'm out. Kind of scared. The worst is not behind us yet. Oh, God. What's that leaking into the water there? Maybe I should take out my boombox. There we go. <laughs> the rest of the chain trails off into the ocean. The chain trails off into the ocean, connecting the island to the supply depot on the coast. Point to it. This leads to the depot on the island's end. Ah, yes. So it seems. Lieutenant looks at the mechanism overhead. Point to it. This leads to the depot on the land's end. I just said that. What do you think it was used for? For bringing munitions to the island, maybe? And supplies? You could also lock the bay when you raise the chain. Lock it from whom? From enemies. Enemies of the commune of Revachol. This sea fort was a revolutionary fortification, I believe. All right. Ooh, I'm a little scared. I'm definitely scared. It makes you have bridge. The bombs were powerful enough to break the foundation. So who's living out here? These tires are falling apart. They're at least 50 years old. Some fuel has leaked out of the barrel. Black viscous. Attention, inflammable. The dry grass crackles under your feet as you stop. Far away, birds' wings touch the still surface of the sea. What is that flutter? The flock of quail departs. Now more than a hundred meters away. A hundred and two. A hundred and five. Underneath the flutter? On the islet, there is almost no wind. Just the light movement of air through the reeds. Bulrushes swaying on the waterline. Long dried leaves chafing against each other, like a silent orchestra tuning at the beginning of some major work of great importance to the few who attend. I'm really nervous. I don't want anything bad to happen to them. But it really feels like this is, this is the end game here. To the west. A silent hiss. Sea air moving through the needles of a pine tree. To the east. The faraway roar of the city, distant like today's dream. Before it, the sound of sand. The low tide filtered through its grains, a bird tending to its feathers. Ahead. A low hum. The air slowly moves through a concrete box, through its ancient slits and cracks, resonating, hollow, a big building. Beyond that, further north. Air flows out of a pillbox window. There is very little there. The air cossacks flowers on the meadow. Absolute silence. Reeds motionless. Bulrushes motionless. Below the silence? A jitter. A sound impatient to happen. But not yet in this world. You hear some kind of limb fidget. Producing an imperceptible tick. No. It's just your imagination. You can't hear such things. Kim. Yes? This is where a lesser man would stop to think about the pain shooting <laughs> up his right leg and into his groin. Not you. You're concentrated on how. <laughs> it's pretty silent on this island. Have you noticed how quiet it is? It's really fucking silent on this island. Have you noticed how quiet it is? I have. Is that why we're stopping? Mm -hmm. Wait, I had to listen to one more thing. The lieutenant nods in silence. Okay, I guess that's it. Ooh, I have the jitters. The barrel says ICM. You see a star with little specks on it. I really have no theories as to who could have shot him. Who and who's out here? I don't know. The little birch from the coin-operated viewer is still holding on. No way to get up there. The stairs are gone. Looks like I can't reach it over here. Oh, eh. 
ICM? This feels familiar somehow. Kim, what is ICM? Insul Indian Citizens Militia. It's the official name of the Communal Army. Oh. The black and white army of the revolution. Sounds an awful lot like. Sounds like RCM, Revishul Citizens Militia. It does. Why? The RCM may descend from the ICM. May? It's impossible to say. It was chaos after the war. The name was good for getting people to join us. Revachol West was mostly workers and criminals. He looks towards the darkened doorway. Nice political thoughts rush <laughs> through your neocortex. It's going to be hard to say them. Carrying around all that weight on a busted crutch is making you panic. <laughs> yeah, I'm not doing so good. What I'm hearing is we descend from the glorious revolutionary army. It's a little embarrassing in 51, no? Maybe we need a rebrand? ICM sounds like ICP, very close to the International Collaboration Police. Nice and normal that way. Just catch your breath. This is better preserved than the others. You can still read the sign. He bows to inspect the barrel. A white star pointed star on the label. No, an upside down star. He looks at it. With its horns in the sky. The symbol of the comet. Oh, okay. Are those specks stars too? No, that's the uninhabited archipelago. A DeLorean era symbol of Insulinda, known as the face in the sea. Looks old. What's it still doing here? After 44 years? That's not nearly enough to hide what happened here, Lieutenant Gefreiter. <laughs> One of these barrels was still leaking fuel, as you saw. The city is full of things like this. Old bullets, guns, fuel. Alright. I just want to make sure I'm getting everything. Okay, that's what we were looking at. I didn't know what we were looking at. The music is so good. There's a lingering trace of mazout in the air. Oh, the music is so good in this game. Where did our, our old partner go? Where did he go? <laughs> what is he doing in all this? Why did he even come to Martinez in the first place? I don't get it. Whoa. This was once an armament rest. Armament? Arnament? How do you say that? Uh... Whoa. Whoa. Books, mostly fantastic and historical fiction. Dishes stained with sauce and fire, a survivor's kitchen. Well, he's obviously a communist. <laughs> Army surplus winter scarf. Uh, Army surplus winter scarf. This towy old scarf itches when wrapped around the neck. It was, it has humanitarian aid written all over it. Yet you know that thousands all over the Isola are suffering the same fate as you. The fate of an uncomfortable army surplus scarves. Sure, why not? <laughs> Empathy, plight of the underclass, composure, sucks to be poor. The moss bitten bedsheet keeps the wind out. You see the candles planted on a broken rangefinder. Books and magazines lie scattered on the floor and on a makeshift cupboard. They are not particularly well organized. Sift through them. Most are soft covers, serialized fantastique and detective stories from the 20s and 30s. This disparate digest includes the classic Animal Adventures, among what is mostly commercial fiction and serialized stories. You find a magazine cathodique for electrical engineering. Then it's back to pulp. Light erotica, an international thriller about circuit benders. Someone's made themselves a home. Lieutenant inspects a stoke, a soft cover. Uh, does anything stand out as unusual? It's pretty low. I'm um, gonna save my skill point just in case something comes up. I'm sure I'll have a... My mic is shaking. I'm sure I'll have a red check that I have to uh, have to try. But let's see. Conceptualization. Um, let's try it. Soft covers. Serialized. Not that you can yeah. tell. This is a digest of someone who's dead bored. Most of it is for entertainment purposes. Hmm. Fittingly, right next to the radiola on the floor. 
Nothing? Nothing out of the ordinary? Maybe it's a little old-fashioned. There's a nude mag. More than that, you can't say. All right. Guess there's nothing. But let's see here. Let's put my... Yeah, let's put that back on. All right. What's this? There's a greasy old spring mattress in the corner, resting on piles of soft cover books. White linen and a pillow are visible under a worn-out caracal blanket. Someone has been squatting here. The linen is fresh, recently washed. Lieutenant inspects the bed. How recently? You force the rest of the sentence out through pain, thick as molasses, no longer able to hear yourself speak. Not doing so good. You no, know, officer. You can rest here if you are feeling tired. I will keep watch. You could use some rest for what's ahead. Maybe a little shut eye, just an hour. You face the concrete wall. There's less light there, in the dark corner. Like a dog, you lie there. Curl up with your knees close to your chest. The blanket feels cold. The entire room does. Concrete and cold. Minutes pass. Half an hour, maybe. The sounds of the sea beyond grow distant. Your eyelids close. Until... Until? You feel yourself standing up in the darkness. Right next to the mattress. Slowly, the world begins to hatch from the blackness. It's evening. Am I gonna have a dream? I almost didn't go to sleep, but then I realized I could probably heal myself if I did. Oh. Kim? Oh god. <laughs> Please don't tell me anything happened to him. <laughs> Whoa. This is weird. The tent is no longer here. Go outside of the beach. Okay. Okay. I'm stressed. I'm stressed. Kim? Door is so here. Closed. Feels strange somehow. You can't get in. Uh, what? What is going on? Uh, am I dreaming? I feel like I'm dreaming. Hello? Uh, what? What's happening? I should not have taken a nap. Down to the chain. There's something there. What? Down to the chain. Walk into the water now. Oh god, what? I don't... Can... Hear her footprints on the water. Whoa! Further. <gasps> Dolores Day. Oh, shit. The innocence of humanism, internationalism, and the welfare state turns around to face you. Oh. She has an airship airbag in her hand. She seems to be in a hurry. This is crazy. The video store. Isn't that what he said that he like lived by a video rental store with his wife or something? Ugh. Okay, don't say you need to talk right away. Melt the ice first. This way you're already talking. But you don't even want to talk to her. She would only be cold and mean. Let her go. Let her go? This is the Holy Queen of the Territories of Mwindi and in Selinda. <laughs> Think of the historic knowledge we could glean. This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to win her back. Win her back? Hey, something is off. Where are you going? What's in the bag? Can you stay for a moment? We need to talk. We need to have one more massive epic showdown. Hey. Hey. Hey, that's all I get? Smile. How are you doing? I'm sorry, I shouldn't have bothered you. Is Dolores Day sort of a front for my ex? How are you doing? I'm doing really good, actually. Both professionally and romantically. I've come to a fulfilling and peaceful period in my life. Well, how are you doing, Harry? That's definitely what it's supposed to represent. This hurts. <laughs> I'm not doing very well. I'm dying, and a ruined flake 
flak tower, blood is dripping down my chest. I'm in my head. I miss you. I'm not doing very well. well. Don't say that. I know this positive thing sounds stupid to you, Harry, but it works. We all have an obligation to be happy. You too. And you will be. Now. She looks over your shoulder. Why am I about to cry? This is everything I always warned you about. <laughs> Something's off. I'm sorry. I was heading to the aerodrome. I just don't have time to... She stops mid-sentence, glances to her right, then looks in her bag. She means she doesn't have time to tend to your emotions. Where are you going? I'm going to Morova. To live there, in Grad. It's one million kilometers away, Harry. Might as well be another lifetime. What's in the bag? Just my scepter, my globe crucigere, a spare silk gown, a toothbrush, travel documents, the crown of immortality. Crown of immortality? Aren't you already wearing one? Oh, this. She cracks a wreath on her forehead. This is just a wreath. The crown of immortality is made of rarefied light, manna, and raw palladium. It was passed on to me by the rulers of late antiquity. She looks at the suitcase, not knowing what more to say. Then, over her shoulder. Silence. Her nuptial gown flows in the wind. Wraps around her holy body. Anyway. Your skin is holy and soft. No, Harry. It's just regular skin. I'm not as beautiful as you always thought I was. Let's not get into it. You are. None of the others are as beautiful as you. She does not answer. There's that expression again. Silence. A distant wind blows. You can't think of anything pretty to say. Um, can you stay for a moment? We need to talk. No, Harry. No. I don't want a massive, epic showdown. I want to go to the aerodrome. I have tickets for the 1020 flight to Morova. Really? She looks at you plaintively. We don't have anything to talk about anymore. Every combination of words has been played out. The atoms don't form us anymore. Us. Our love. Our unborn daughters. It's all gone. I have to go to the aerodrome. I have to leave Ravishol and you. And you have to be alone. In hell, forever. That's just the way it is. Oh God, whatever you do, <gasps> don't try to kiss her yet. Not after that. You're still reeling. You'll fall over if you try now. Oh God. I can't, I can't upgrade my skills either. But that's not very, that's not a very good way for things to be. I get the feeling you're not really Dolores Day. I don't know what you mean. Dolores Day? She looks at you quizzically. It does not seem like a mystery she wants to get into. You're the X something. You're point to your head, the morning. I've heard you before. You're the voice on the phone. Oh, Harry. You shouldn't have done that. She shakes her head very slowly, her white hair brushing over her shoulders. Do what? Call me like that. You ruined it. There was still a chance. You should have waited longer. She would have called you instead. I know. You would have called me yourself if I let you. It was too impatient. It wasn't me. It was my hand. Raise your hand. Right fingers. My fingers called you. Let's talk about something else. I was too impatient. Oh, Harry. Do you really think so? We haven't talked in years. I don't want to call you. I don't want to hear from you. I think of you less and less every year. Weeks go by without me remembering you. Damn. Months already. Soon it will be years. Every season that passes, the light gets less clear. I sit there in Morova, in the holy gratitude of my bliss. I put my hand on my belly and smile. The air. It's cold around you. She looks down on her stomach, then up at you, 
Her eyes are full of tremendous distance and mystery. Is she pregnant? The death blow is coming. Black-eyed dogs wander the alleys. Apple trees hang their bony limbs low over the patchwork of roofs. Red and black. Revachol West, the evening sun. She's left and bloomed. Far away from us. Our vast soul. Your name? Means pain. I don't want to say that. Why? That's what dolor means. You're the symbol of pain. Great. Now I'm the symbol of pain. The air remains just as cold. That was not the death blow yet. You saved yourself. For now. Keep stumbling around and it will happen. You're the morning. The morning? I don't understand. It's probably better that you don't. Yes. It really, really is better that I don't. On second thought, you're Dolores Day, queen regnant of the territories of Mundi and Insulindi, nothing else. Yes, Harry. I am. Things have gotten much better for me, now that I am the ruler of the known world. Oh god, it's already so late. I have to go, Harry. She pulls up the silvery sleeve of her gown to check the time. A tiny golden watch with red straps around her bony little wrists. Oh god, I bought you this figurine of a headless fallen rider. Give it to her. Oh my god, I did not think that would come into play. I've taken responsibilities for my actions now. I'm a new man, weighty and normal. She doesn't know what to say. I'm so fucking normal right now. Yes, okay. I'm glad. I mean, I'm a moralist. Other moralists took me away on their airship. I'm not a broken, insane man who can't live without you. I know I've made mistakes, and I have taken full responsibility for all of them. So you can live with me again if you want to. I'm better now. This is such a bad thing to say. It doesn't sound like you're better at all, Harry. It doesn't even sound like you're a moralist. It just sounds like you want to win me back or something. I don't want you to try that anymore, okay? It's too sad. I need to go. Total annihilation. We got annihilated, Harry. It wasn't about responsibility at all. It was always only about you having no power at all over her, yourself. Anything. That's why they didn't take you on that airship. You're insane without her. But you said I have a vast soul and you will always come back to it. We both said a lot of things. We were very young. It was her. I can feel it. I can see it in her tender long fingers. In her wrists. Her hand wrote it. Said those things. Actually, you didn't say it. You wrote it in a letter, a handwritten letter. I kept it in my paperwork. As Queen Regnant, I write a lot of letters. She she brushes a strand of white hair out of her eye. You need to recite it to her. For effect. All of it. No summaries. Yeah. Put a stake through your heart. She'll get hurt too. Collateral damage. Oh, God. I don't think I should do that. I have it right here. Let me refresh your memory. Let's take a pause bitterly. Trip down memory lane. Start reciting. I know what- you know what I mean. You left me a letter saying that you will come back to me, that you can't believe how happy you are with me. Start reciting it. Please, Harry. I just don't have time for this. Take out the letter and read. Every morning when I step out your- sleep behind me, find a little piece of sadness in me. I carry it in my chest voy down Voyager Road. Every step I take, it grows, until by the time I reach the fuel station, it has filled me completely. I step on the light trail, light rail and look back. Something, something, bow collector. I know it will be like this until I walk back to you. You, you, every step I take will get lighter. It almost makes me run. Sometimes I do. I can't believe I met you. I can't believe the happiness I feel with you. You have a vast, vast soul, and I will always, always, always come back to it. Okay, stop. Yes. Are you happy now? She surrenders. 
No, I'm not happy. Then why are you doing this? She sighs in frustration. I don't know. There's more. Kisses, kisses, kisses. Very well. I wrote it. It was morning. You slept. There was hoarfrost on the ground when I left. On Voyager Road. It was autumn. The first autumn. But Harry, please understand. It was a million years ago. No. It was a hundred million years ago. I was someone else then. Filled to the brim with love for you. Hanging on your every word. Oh, Harry, you were the coolest. But I am no longer that person. This has taken her place. It will devour you. Harry, I will eat your mind. The light of the video rental shines through her dress now. A DeLorean figure, cut in black, moves below. It's still her, her legs, her breasts, her hips. I was cool. Can't you turn back to the person you were? I can see her in you under the gown and in that wreath. Voyager Road, I know that place. Where is it? It's here, Harry. We are on Voyager Road. At the end of it, 300 meters from the stop. We used to come here to rent videos. The house. There. You could not pay the electrical bill. It became a lightless tomb. The years you spent training for the militia, my parents' money, it was not good. Surely the alcohol didn't help either. <laughs> I, was I... Were we drinking? That's not it. It's super easy to quit drinking and has no effect on human relations of this kind. Were we drinking? Everyone has a little glass of wine every now and then. I certainly do. It's a Queen Regnant thing. I don't think it was the alcohol. It was inevitability. She looks at her toenails sticking out from under the gown. See? If you drank with her, you'd be cool again. If you drank with her, you could have sex Leave with me alone. alcohol. What now? What happens now? What is the next thing we talk about? Is there really anything left? If not, we can always repeat one of the things we have already talked about. Talk about it again. If you do not feel like doing that, then you should let me go to the aerodrome. I know you still love me. Kiss her. I'm gonna fail it. This is such a bad idea. With your feet trembling from the steps you took, tepid and fearful, you stand against her, her body close to you, radiating warmth. With your eyes closed, you move your lips on her mouth. She is not kissing you back. This is horrible. I shouldn't have kissed her. But I succeeded. This was not about failure or success. This was always going to be horror. I should not have suggested it, and you should not have listened to me. Feel her breath. Her chest rising like a pillow. Warm exhalations against the side of your mouth. Her tender soul moving through her lungs. Hidden. Distant. Kept safe from you. Her cheek against mine. Feels like soft fuzz. A bird covered in down feathers. Brushing against your broken capillaries. The world's most precious material. Reserved for those she lets close enough to feel it. You are stealing a touch. It's not yours to take. You're not kissing me back. The moment is ending. She is going to move her face away from yours. I shouldn't have done that. Trying hard not to look at you. When she withdrew, and you held on to her hand. She tried not to look at your face and see the expression there. Brother, you should put me in front of a firing squad. I have no words for how I failed you. <laughs> it's 
It's okay, suggestion. You didn't kiss me back. Why didn't you kiss me back? You're the apricot chewing sen gum scented one. That's it then. No, Harry. Not yet. There is one more thing you have to see. She's pregnant. She slides her hands down her chest and onto her lower stomach and smiles. I'm pregnant. Is it mine? It's his, the man I heard on the phone? Yes. He did it. She looks down at her belly, then up into your old eyes. I terminated yours. Don't you remember, you poor fuck? You poverty-stricken fuck. Jesus. Now, go ahead. Ask me more questions. Let's talk about something else. She wipes her palms under the silk of her gown. No, this has to end. Do the last one. More questions. Ask more. Don't go. I have to, Harry. Really, I've already missed the 8.30. I'm gonna go now. Her fingers wrap around the bag handle. I was wrong. You don't have power over her anymore. You shouldn't have said that. I am wrong about everything. Mm -hmm. You should go on without me. You have sworn a holy... You have sworn a holy oath, Harry. She herself begged you to not let her go. Wait, we can't we sit down and have a coffee first? There's a cafeteria on the corner, point east. Hold on. What is there to do in Morova? But I swore you, I wouldn't let you go. You told me. You asked me to be this way. Okay, I understand. Not silently like a martyr. I'm actually, wait, I need to see my list again. I'm sorry, where's my list? Wait! <sighs> Harry, just let her go, man. I understand. No, you don't. You're just being a martyr. And I'm really going now. The time is up. I must be on the 1020 flight. Just let her go. She turns. Will we ever see each other again? I won't see you, but you will see me. How can that be? Oh, Harry. This is a dream. Can't you see? I'm already in Morova by now. Who knows how long ago this happened? A year? Two? Five years ago? How will I see you again, then? Right here, tomorrow night. Once this dream starts happening, it keeps happening. Three times a week, at least. And Harry, it really, really looks like it started happening again. There's the video rental. I'm suffocatingly beautiful. And young. And I smell of tutti fruity chewing gum. Like I did that time when I asked you for forgiveness. After leaving you the first time. So long ago. This is intolerably bad. Oh yes. This is real darkness. It's not death, or war, or child molestation. Real darkness has love for a face. The first death is in the heart, Harry. See you tomorrow. <sighs> I should have just let her go. I shouldn't have kissed her. Hi. You're up quick. How was your sleep? <laughs> Let's solve the fucking case. My sleep was deep and invigorating. Try to cover up the blood seeping out with your hands. Actually, it was total annihilation, Kim. Swallow the blood and con conclude. Let's comb the entire island centimeter by centimeter. That's the next step, step in the test chain. Just spit out the blood and get back to work. You're a badass like that. My sleep was deep and invigorating. Of course. I was just thinking maybe you've torn your stitches. Are you ready to move on? Actually, it was total annihilation, Kim. I did not want to wake you. Perhaps I should have? Was it a job dream? No, oh, he frowns. No, an ex-wife dream. Yeah, about the job. Fuck it. Ex-wife dream. The lieutenant nods solemnly. I understand. We've all been through similar things. It can be overcome. I wonder if he has. Solve the fucking case. Are you sure you're okay? 
You thrashed around and you bolted up, half covered in blood from your wound. <laughs> Just spit out the blood and get back to work. Okay. He replies simply. He's still worried. You must have really thrashed and squealed in your sleep. I'm okay. Oh shit, fallen arrow or shirt. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> New shirt, baby. That makes it all better. What the hell? Fallen arrow or shirt. This fallen training shirt has one wash has seen one wash too many. It retains an unusual design. One sleeve short, the other long, but little of its original colors. A giant F swishes across its chest now in gray. Wow. <laughs> Epic. <laughs> oh god, Harry. Okay, that was a peaceful night's sleep. What the hell? Okay. An old cylindrical generator is nested above the ammo lift with makeshift electrical wiring running out of its side and across the floor. The cables disappear into the wall to your right. The lieutenant puts his hand on the metal barrel, checking for warmth. It's cold now, but someone has been maintaining it. The wiring has been repaired. Wait, 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 hold on. When he said that, that was back when we were at the monument trying to contact the coalition. Wait, haven't you heard this before? Yeah. That is weird. Pour fuel into the tank. The lieutenant assists you. I don't know why I'm doing that. the canister up to the fuel tank as you tilt. Dark brown, viscous fluid pours out, and the room fills with a chemical smell. There's a red starter switch on the side of the cylinder and a start rope on the other side. The lieutenant flicks the switch. Pull the rope. The recoil start wakes the old generator up. The machine sputters like an old warhorse before settling down to a rattle. That should do it. Where did these wires lead? Downstairs? Somewhere? He looks at the wall socket. Tap on the side. The tank is far from full, but there should be enough inside to keep it going for a day. Leave. What is with that? When he said that? This old... I don't... I don't know what that means. Even the Inland Empire was like, whoa, whoa, whoa hold on a second. Whoa, Kim! <laughs> Stairs have collapsed. <laughs> Go get Kim. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. That's pretty funny. Alright. Okay. Let's go over here. Green paint flicks off the monoblock aluminium cabinet. There are rows of switches on the front panel, a frequency band, and even a keyboard. Run your fingers across the keyboard. The keys rattle like teeth. This keyboard hasn't been functional in decades. What is this then? The console of an antique computation device. The generator upstairs with wires coming out. They terminate it here. Lieutenant points to wires running into the machine. Could this open the blast door? I think, yes. Let's see. That one. The emergency open. Uh, he points to the emergency dial switch. Turn emergency open. The blast door opens with a series of clicks. A shaft of light appears, then widens as the light shines in. Oh boy. <laughs> okay. Not intimidating at all. A sudden wave of anxiety makes your skin crawl. After you. Lieutenant gestures at the opening. I'm scared. What's there? Point to the door. I don't know. A thin wisp of smoke rises from a charred black fire pit. The wind picks up, then dies down again. I'm scared. Don't be. I have a gun. <laughs> he takes out his sidearm, checks the barrel, then holsters it. I also have a gun. I know. It was not easy to acquire. <laughs> Let's go. I'm out of ammo, the though, am aren't I? Glow animates the okay. It's on. Turn emergency open. Automatic boot. Okay, we already did that. Push light interior? 
The lighting in the room turns on with a sizzle. A dim, ambient <laughs> orange. Slide radio dial. The dial slides under the glass, dark and silent. Restoring electric power has not breathed life into it. Hmm. All right. What's this? Hatch is jammed shut. Could we use our crowbar? Okay. <laughs> How about multi-tool? Nope. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna put my gun in my hand. <laughs> Holding the gun feels natural and satisfying. It's like an extension of your arm. The polished wooden handle almost fusing into your palm. I think my hand recognizes it. It reminds you of the day you first held it with fear and respect, hoping you don't have to use it in vain. The sun was out in Jamrock. It was so long ago. But this is your gun. It's more of a symbol than anything else because there is always Always a rational, sensible, reasonable solution to every situation. <laughs> Sheathe it and know you have the moral high ground. Do I even think I have any ammo? So. Oh shit. Nice. Let's go out here first. A firing slit. You, can, you can't see inside. Must have been a direct hit to take out such a large chunk. The distant sound of cargo ships, signal horns echo on the water. The reeds sway strangely. No, it's nothing. Okay. Sounds legit. The winch is broken. Rust has eaten what remains of the chain. A strange feeling looking hmm. at the water. Maybe you should just wander off into the sea. Leave it all and walk in with a bottle in your hand. Why? Perhaps there's someone there under the water waiting for you. Come on, Harry. Smelling of tutti frutti and betrayal. Maybe you know it's going to hurt. But it's cold. Yes, cold and still. But love is warm like the inside of her mouth. No, 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 no. Yes, 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 yes. No, no. We're not starting with that. Not now. Not this time. This thought is over. Raise your sight. In the still mirror of the bay, you see Martinez reflected. Tall edifices of ruins reach into the water, like shimmering towers. And the shacks, too. Pine trees and motor lorries, upside down. Islets and posts, like stepping stones, lead into the water in front of you. Go. Step in. It's been too long. Don't think I can. Oh, wait. Can I? <laughs> oh. Don't think I'm supposed to step over there. Never mind. Alright. Let's search up a little higher over here. Before we go into that door. The pain in your pelvis makes you wince, then you continue. Inside of the fortress, you can make out the console and the blast door. The depot that supplied this chain is long gone from the coast. There's a rain-soaked mattress on a concrete slab, only half covered by the crumbling roof. At the head of it, double embrasures, firing slits like two eyes in the wall. B triple prime. Oh. This looks like a good place to shoot from. Inspect the mattress. A single person mattress. Modern. Civilian use. Brand name. Marjorie. There's a fuel stain on the cover, along with cigarette burns. Okay, hold up. Hold up right now. There's like a blue staining on the wall over there. And if I remember correctly, there was a blue staining on the door in Harry's hostel room. The bathroom door. The wall. Ow. Oh, I just hit my ankle. The one that he totally broke down. I really hope that the twist isn't that Harry actually shot him, but I feel like that's the direction they're taking this in. And an empty can of beans on the ground next to it. 
fit into know. the brim with cigarette butts. I hope not, but I feel like that's where it's going. Pick a pick one out of the can. The silhouette of a tobacco picker adorns the paper filter. The brand Tio Motiri. Tio Tio Motiri, like the ones we found at the Land's End, remember? I may have been wrong when I said it wasn't important. This means the same person could have visited both locations. He stares into the can for a second. I didn't see any signs of smoking inside, though. If people live there, they keep it tidy. This here may also be a smoking spot. Inspect the wall. There's a firing slit in the wall in front of you, like a little window. Touch the concrete first. Quite old and grimy from years without cleaning by anything other than the rain. Look through the hole in the concrete. The springs screech as you lean on the mattress and crane your neck to look out. Trepidation. A tingling feeling in your stomach. A small piece of Martinez coastline Whoa. opens up in the square in front of you, like a tiny landscape painting. One kilometer across the water. The ruins look familiar. On the left. A towering skyscraper, its top floors shaved off by artillery fire. Capeside <laughs> Apartments, Rue de saint Lane, 33A and 33B. On the right. The red chimney and collapsed back of the four-story tenement in front of the whirling in rags. Rue de saint Lane, 10. The doomed commercial area. And between the two? The box-shaped silhouette of the whirling in rags. Its sloped roof, a tiny fleck of light yep. catches your eye on the rooftop, sunlight reflecting off the upstairs window of Clasia's room. Motherfucker. There it is. I can't be 100% certain, but... What? Do you have a line of sight to the window? What are you talking about? Can't be certain. <laughs> it's certain. Kim, with a pair of binoculars, I would be able to see inside the room. Yes, there's an opening between 33A and 10. I can see to the roof. I'd be able to see inside the room. A pair of binoculars or a scope of a rifle? You'd be prone, lying on the mattress, barrel resting on the embrasure. He points to the makeshift bed. Cheek against the cheek rest, hand on the hair trigger, on a calm day like this. Kim, I could make it. I could make the shot. Good. I think we have it, Detective. The origin of the shot. This is the sniper's nest. He pats you on the back, three small pats in a row. Finally. Better late than never. Why didn't we come here before? Booyah, master cop work. Uh, why didn't we come here before? Why? We don't go everywhere in a thousand meter radius of the crime scene. That's not procedure. You're right. Seven people are dead. Don't beat yourself up, officer. We did not put guns in their hands or get them drunk. He looks north over the fortification, then adds. The lieutenant pauses. Regret comes over him. We will make up for it. Here. I feel it. Could the shooter still be here? Where? In Martinez. On this island. Right here. Point at the mattress. What are you implying, Harry? On this island. He does not answer. Just nods. With his back hunched, he looks around once more and says, He feels uncomfortable suddenly. We should move now. Okay. A weathered artillery map shows coordinates in the Bay of Revachol. Oh, fuel canister. Nice. An old medicine cabinet newly stocked with droamine. Oh, hell yeah. Alright. I don't think there's anything there's to do. Race beach okay i'm really happy we looked up here first before we went down there i guess not all right oh feel eyes on your back something's watching but you can't say where <laughs> well kim is directly behind me so <laughs> but no uh let's go back inside i'm scared <laughs> uh should i be having a gun in my hand i have two two skill points i'm saving them uh, LUM fuel canister. There's still some fuel in this battered canister. A liter or two. The metal looks decades old. The logo of the automotive manufacturer, LUM, has faded onto the side. 
Water rushes below, far down below. All right, I'm scared. <sighs> I don't think I'm gonna go too much farther in this episode. I, we will see where this ends up. So that was a fucking lie. Can we save it again? <laughs> I'm scared. Small white flowers blossom all around you. Are they Mabel's? Rubber dinghy, it's deflated, broken. Hi. Who are you? Whoa. Hi. A deserter. An old man wearing tracksuit trousers leans on the frame stock of his rifle. He gathers a big ball of spit in his mouth, then spits it out into the extinguished fire before him. He raises his black eyes, hooded by creased eyelids, to meet yours. This must be the guy that the kids are talking about. Unclouded by cataracts, his eyesight is sharp. He's practically tearing up from spite. Hatred got the best of him a long time ago. <laughs> this man hates everything. Okay. Are you the fire guy? You've retained your eyesight. Did you close the blast door? Nice gun you got there. Sir, I need you to put that gun down so we can talk further. We're with the police. I'm with the police. You can keep the gun, but keep it down. Not one move. Proceed. Sorry for disturbing you. Goodbye. Are you the fire guy? The what now? I can't hear you. He cups his ear. Did you recently tell two kids to put their fire out? Two twins. I may have. All sorts of little rats have come sniffing around, trying to give up the position. Fire guy. Regressive bourgeoisie henchman. Can't even talk like a grown-up. He shakes his head. You've retained your eyesight. My eyesight? <clears throat> yes. Helps me see all the shit. He clears his throat. A shudder of disgust passes his right side. His left side remains motionless. Did you close about blast door? I did. And you opened it. How? <laughs> Is he about to die? He breathes out with a wheeze. I fueled the generator, then used the console. I should have burned that console down. He shakes his head. How did you know I was coming? Reactionary rock and roll music. Playing on the water. He gestures north. Told you we shouldn't play sad FM. But you didn't say that, Kim. It was not rock and roll, it was sad FM. It was not reactionary, it was cool. But you didn't say that, Kim. I did. We have entered a world where he said you shouldn't. It is the only world. <laughs> but he didn't say that. Um, it was not reactionary, it was cool. The fascists were right about rock and roll. It is degenerate. Hip gyrating mental illness music. <laughs> Stude is a little bit bitter. Nice gun you got there. It's not nice. It's a piece of shit. But it gets the job done. Is that a Bell McGraw? It's a Triangong. 446. A Samaron rifle. How did you get hold of one? It was sent to us by our brothers in the Sinyao commune. Military aid. He pats the rifle. It has stayed true to him. He can still make it sing. The Sinyao commune? You heard me. It's good now. Like chalk wiped from the ball. His gaze turns inward. Your weapon has stayed true to you. Mine has stayed true to me, too. Put your hand on your belt. Yes. I bet you've killed a lot of people with it. You fascist fuck. His eyes narrow. Have you come to make me one of them? 
His grip on the rifle tightens. His right eye twitches. With what? Fear? Rage? We have come to ask you questions. Nothing more. The lieutenant puts his hand on his holster. If you do not comply, we will take you in. Do you understand? Another spitball lands in the ashes. That's all the answer he gives. The danger levels here are hard to read. One moment he's a fire, the next hmm. a fire gone out. Um, sir, I need you to put the gun down so we can talk further. I'm with the police. You can keep the gun, but keep it down. Not one move. No. Lieutenant aims his pistol square at the man's head. Put it down now, sir. Damn, okay. Chill. Or you're gonna blow my brains out before you question me. To hell with it. It's a walking stick anyway. There's a moment of silence. It's out of bullets. <sighs> the old man lays the rifle down carelessly and looks at it lying there. Like an amputated limb in the sand. Pick up the gun lying in the sand. His gaze follows your motions. The rifle feels surprisingly light in your hand. Frame stopped and patched in places with tape and wire. The rifle's in a shabby state, like a crutch that's seen too much travel. Hieroglyphs are embossed into the forearm made of walnut. This makes it feel like he didn't actually use that gun to kill him. On the butt, you see Vespertine writing. Burnt into the wood. Triangon, 4.46 millimeter, made in Sinyao. Sinyao, I <laughs> pronounced it wrong. It's as he said, it's a triangon, made in Sinyao. No one said it has to be a Belma grave. We were just guessing. The lieutenant does not take his eyes off the old man. From ballistics, it could easily have been mm. a triangon, too. Well then. <laughs> it doesn't matter if it was made in Shanti Shanti. All it has to do is use jacketed ammunition, and it does. This uses jacketed ammunition 4.46. The right type and the right calibre. <laughs> Whenever he says that word, it makes me laugh. The lieutenant nods, glancing at the gun. He's liking this. Stow the gun. The old man keeps following your motion with his gaze. His right arm twitches suddenly. This looked very much like the murder weapon. It could be used against him to get a confession in time. But what would his purpose of killing that man be? My guess is maybe he was hired out by someone? Who are you? My name is Josef Lilianovich Dross. Political Commissar of the 114th Anti-Aircraft Division of the 4th Army of the Commune of Revachol. I am a deserter, a partisan, and a prisoner of war. This is my termless surrender. His eyes turn to the reeds again, dead and dull. The commune of Revachol? Do you mean the ICM? Your uh, holdover from the... the... Lieutenant forgets to close his mouth. From the Insul Indian Citizens Militia, the army of the revolution, I was recruited in Jamrock in 07, trained in the École de Contrôle Orion, and consigned to emergency defense duties in 08. I left my unit on the eve of the landing. When I returned here on May 14th, the commune had fallen. Still armed and ideologically trained, I wrote a criticism of myself and resumed partisan duties. 51 minus 8 equals 43. You've been on this island for 43 years? No. Oh. <laughs> I've been on other islands, too. He looks into the fire. A wisp of smoke rises from somewhere between the charred logs. I was an resurrection until they turned it into a spa. In 18. Then I was an E-48. A nameless sound. Until the sea washed over it. Then I came back here. That was... 20 
two years ago. You said you deserted your unit? I was just 16 years old. 15 when I volunteered. I had a lapse of faith. <clears throat> and of courage, too. Lapse of faith? You could say I misunderstood the historic role of the proletariat and thought Mazovian socioeconomics were fallible. For a second, I doubted the irreducible laws of historic materialism. A second is all it took. For what? For reaction to take hold. It wasn't reaction, you were just afraid. What's reaction? Petty bourgeois terror. It's in all men. You were just afraid. It's the same thing. You haven't seen it. Not really. Not naked. It's impossible not to be afraid. And this was when? Lieutenant instinctively looks to his notebook, but does not take it out. May the 13th, 08, 44 years ago. The horizon <coughs> was black with coalition airships. Their petroleum rose to the sky and it looked like... Like it formed the clouds. Storm clouds. When they started shelling, it was dark magic. Dark magic? The combined might of international capital. All at once, all the greed and terror in the world tore into Revachol. It lifted streets from the ground and turned houses into ghosts. We were in the flak tower. He gestures to it. Huddled on the floor, the artillery was 80 kilometers away in Ozon, but I knew, I knew the commune would fall. We would all be turned into ash. So I said I was going to the map room. He looks east. A terrible shame, still within him. The lobes of his ears are red with it. The shame and smallness of what he became. You didn't go to the map room. No. Nah. I climbed the chain link across the water and hid inland, in the bunkers there, like the weakest of the weak. A mouse, frightened of the ordinance all night and the sound of the rotors in the morning, whirring. He looks at the sky. What was that? Airships. I climbed out into hell. The landing was complete. The chain was submerged. I had to swim back. The fortress was half submerged too. Shattered. They'd all drowned in the lower levels, or got torn to shreds <laughs> above. The anti-aircraft gun had malfunctioned. So had I. I left them without ideological direction. It was real. I'd seen it. I've seen it in reality. He opens his eyes and stares right through you. Some kind of great terror. Worse than you've ever seen. Seen what? The mask of humanity fall from capital. It has to take it off to kill everyone. Everything you love. All the hope and tenderness in the world. It has to take it off just for one second to do the deed and then you see it as it strangles and beats your friends to death the sweetest most courageous people in the world you see the fear and power in its eyes then you know what that the bourgeois are not human <laughs> that's definitely enough for now the old man does not say more. Those black eyes of his keep piercing you as he looks to some great distance and shakes his head slowly, retreating from it. This guy talks a lot. God damn. You still have a lot more to get through. Um, you said this is your termless surrender. You're with the RCM. The coalition-appointed mob 
that enforces bourgeois morals in Revachol. We're not coalition appointed, we just try to help people. That's right, we're with the good guys. We enforce the law, we keep these animals from killing each other. I know what it looks like, but I have secret plans to turn RCM into a Mazovian revolutionary unit. We're with the RCM, let's leave it at that. Let's. You represent the Moralist International. The enemies of humanity who took this city. I represent their adversary, Le Parti Communiste d'Anselonde. Take me to them as a prisoner of war. I have relinquished my weapon. I can no longer serve. No superiors can relieve me of my duty. You bulldoze them all to a mass grave for trying to free humanity. <coughs> shakes his, his hand shakes and he breaks into a coughing fit. A spray of blood from his mouth on the black charcoal in the fire pit. This guy got tuberculosis? Rene. The royalist on the coast said. Carminard signed the Revolutionian Instrument of Surrender. Liberal reactionaries signed that instrument. Traitors who should have been burned alive. I answer to the Communist Party. Is that part of why you've been here all this time? Because the party didn't surrender? Or he's just a coward. He just wipes the blood from his chin. That's insane. You're insane. Radio shows, speed racing, sporting goods. None of it is real. What is this place, this island? It's not an oh, island. Geez. <laughs> it's a defensive fortification of the commune of Revachol. And I am its last surviving defender. He looks around. What was it used for? The congenitally deformed King Philip II built it to restrict access to the Bay of Revachol. We captured it in 02, retrofitted the fort with an AA gun to defend against an airborne landing against the whole world. You mean the landing, retaking Revachol? Coalition military called it Operation Deathblow. I later found out on the radio they called it Deathblow. You are one of them. Tell me, who speaks like that? We had 50 million people on Caillou alone. Are we gonna arrest this guy? <laughs> Someone who's come to end this madness. Iblis. Iblis? The black-eyed angel. How have you survived all this time? How does anyone survive? I steal. He looks at his worn running shoes. What do you steal? Supplies, vegetables. I collect rainwater. It's the life of a dog, not a human being. <coughs> he coughs once more, then puts his hand on his belly. Are those, uh, fawn shoes by any chance? <laughs> How is your health, Mr. Dross? I've been throwing up blood since winter. Red, like beetroot. Been passing it in stool, too. Ouch. DRCM can provide medical services. You need to be looked over. I need to die. You don't have medical facilities? You have guns. That's all they give you. Toy guns. A droll smile stretches across his mouth. I think he just wants to die, to be honest. You also have Druamine. You have Druamine and other opioid-based painkillers. You must be in pain. This is a serious situation. You need to be looked over and we can do it. Have you coped mentally? Oh, how have you coped mentally? You need to be looked over and we can do it. There's nothing to look over. The triage is in, and it's black. Administer morphine. Moribund. We have Dromine. I have been running out of that stuff. A light goes on in his eyes as he smacks his dry lips. There's no way he could manage the pain without them. It's safe to say he is addicted to painkillers by now. You like that Dromine, don't you? It's the little joy. Dark joke, 
a sunshiny day, morphine. A crooked smile appears on his face. How have you coped mentally? I haven't. I have holes in my brain. Years missing. Others filled with pain only. A decade of... His eyes roll back in his skull and back. I don't even know what. Inferno? Not appreci appreciatively. I also live in hell. I also have holes in my brain. Point to your head. You know, the lieutenant is about to say something. I would imagine it gets tremendously difficult mentally to live in isolation. Traitors. It's better alone. I watch the people of this city turn the lights back on more and more each year. Ruins glimmering in the dark like a fucking merry-go-round. It's disgusting. He looks down at his shoes, his face parched from the sun and the wind. There's a wince of pain in there somewhere. Are they not heartbroken? How could they have moved on? Again, you've been hiding here for 43 years? 43 years and 10 months. That's the length of my entire life. It's too long. It's not how a human being should live. <clears throat> but I couldn't just forget what I saw. What have you been doing during all this time? Hiding, fishing, waiting. He looks across the water. Where the afternoon grows late. On Rue de Saint Gislaine, people walk home. Street lights will soon be lit. Further inland, the streets are alive with workers, men, women, children, street hawks, and migrant laborers. The temperature is steady. Alto cumulus clouds form above Precinct 41. Two police officers step out of the Whirling and Rags cafeteria. Satellite officer Jean Vic Mayer inspects giant letters across the plaza mosaic in dark red government marked heavy fuel oil. Patrol officer Judith Minow points west. The fishing village. She glances at her watch. We meet in 15 minutes. It's a 10 minute walk. So they're here again. The officers go, leaving behind the writing. Still smelling of petroleum. One day, it says, I will return to your side. Interesting. Always waiting. The old man turns his eyes from the shore and back to you. For what? For her to return. Her who? Girl child. Revolution. I come from there, point to the mainland. I can assure you that it is not what people are planning. I've been there. The city is a tinderbox. It may still happen. I've seen it. Shake your head. Capital is too powerful. The rich are very well organized. We will always betray you. It's not what ha people are planning. I am not a fool. I know. The material base for an uprising has eroded. The working class has betrayed mankind. The historic opportunity for a revolution has passed. It will not come back anymore. However hard I try, whatever I do. How have you concealed yourself for all these years? It was hard in the tens. I didn't have partisan training. They were searching for stragglers, those bloodhounds. Floodlights on the water at night. He closes his eyes. There were posters, campaigns. We communards still hoped, and they needed to snuff that hope out. The East capitulated. Martinez and Cold City were turned to dust. But Jamrock, Forberg, even Coron, and Boogie Street, of course. Those fucking kips had Marsov coursing through their veins. And others, too. Some cordons of Revachol were still fighting. There were cells. I tried to contact them. Soon they all went silent. The frequency's dead. How did you get between here and the mainland? At night. I used a dinghy. I only went after dark then. When I got to the city, I stayed underground. 
Hmm. The trolls, you lot, the commons too. They oh, started snitching. In the Feld building. In the city, you move underground. That's why we find all we found all that uh, communist memorabilia in that room. From bunker to bunker. Not anymore. No one cares now. Hmm. I don't even have to hide. They think I'm another antisocial vagrant. I could walk straight into that town if I wanted. I just... He falls silent, his gaze fixed on the shack, huddled together across the water. There's a weapons cache under the St. Ghislaine 22B.28 in the basement. Have you been there? So you finally found it. <laughs> there must have been a small squadron's worth of arms in there. Belma Graves, right? They were damaged beyond use. I know. So you've been there? Sleeping. <laughs> Some nights. I'm out scrounging on others. Those my graves were shit, even before they corroded. Some had bullets <laughs> in the chamber, however. Uh, there's a small bunker under the Feld building. Have you stayed there? The propaganda bunker. I used to, but not anymore. I knew it! Propaganda bunker? They stored leaflets there. Broadcasting equipment, too. Made broadcasts, I think. Propaganda officers. I buried them with their leaflets. They killed themselves. Two young boys. Killed themselves? A lot of our boys did. I spent some winters there. Never liked it. Kept thinking of them. No need to go underground anymore. It's better in the ruins on the ground. He stares at the ruins of the Felt building. Why don't you just walk there? I don't want to. They're all traitors. Pigs, rabbits, and dogs. Men without ideals are only animals. He does not want to see life moving on. People forget him. <laughs> Drinking. Laughing. One more thing. Do you smoke Timotori cigarettes? Is that how you say it? You weren't... I do. <coughs> he coughs. Ever smoke them on the mainland? Point to the land's end. They're good. Plenty of tar. I like that boy on the pack, too. Reminds me of the last century. Tell me another thing. The old man looks across the water at the city, the ruins. The motorways rising above it. Um, we've been talking to this guy for a long time. He really likes to talk, doesn't he? So you're a communist soldier from the communist army? I think we already knew that. No, I am not a soldier. I am an ideological officer. I belong to the party, not the army. Understood. <laughs> like you belong to the moralist party. He squints his eyes at you. I have another question, serious question for you. There's nothing serious in this world. It's a farce. <sighs> Looks at the gun in your hand, it's a farce. What have you been using this gun for? I've used it for killing people. Here we go, a trail of blood. The lieutenant smells it too. Killing people? It's a gun. That's what they're for. You want a moralist euphemism? Defending your family and your property. I haven't done that. Okay, dude. I've used it to kill people. Interesting. During or after the war? Lieutenant nods. There is no after the war. Class war is never over. He shakes his head and smiles, his teeth rotten black. So he's continued killing after hostilities ended. Okay, okay. Go in straight. <laughs> no euphemisms. He doesn't like those. No, no. Be careful now. Slow and steady does it. Make him repeat it first. Don't mess this up. Remember, he wants to tell you. Get personal. Wait, so which one do I say then? Nothing comes to you. Oh, Silence. Shit. His black eyes look at you, and in them 
a chill, like electricity running up your spine. What? Oh, he's not as it seems. It's kind of scared me. Detective. The lieutenant turns to you with well-disguised impatience. So you're saying you killed people after active fighting stopped. Did you use that gun to shoot and kill a colonel of the security contractor, Cornell? I know you want to tell me. Have you killed anyone with that gun the last week or two? I don't want to tell you anything, you grotesque murderer. And why did you think that was a good idea? <laughs> don't listen to me. I'm wrong. You son of a time. bitch. I hate suggestion. Did you use that gun to shoot and kill a colonel of the security contractor? The who now? He leans in and cups his ear. He heard you. He just wants to hear you say it again. This is dramatic flair on his part. Right choice. We're in. <laughs> Do it, sire. The corpse in the ceramic armor, hanging behind the whirling in rags. Did you shoot him? The fascist death squad who took a bullet in the mouth in the night of March 4th. His name was Ellis Cortenier. He was part of a security detail here at Martinez. Beautiful strong man sent by the Honorable Private Military Company, Grinnell. You know who I mean. The worm there. <laughs> In the monster armor. He spits southwards towards the coast. Nod. An ugly piece of work, that boy. He flashes a gap toothed smile. Did you kill him? The lieutenant takes a sudden step towards the man. I am a son of a welder and an officer of the commune of Revachol. I do not collaborate with murderers and pederasts of the liberal regime. He spits a big one at the lieutenant's feet. Exhaust him with proof. Pile it all on him. Get a confession. The gun. The murder weapon is the perfect opener. The scent of blood in the air. But what else? There was something you can't remember. Let's back off for a moment. You lost what? You lost. Let's try to up my composure without actually using a skill point on it. Because I actually can't. When I think about it, I upgraded it all the way. Uh, what else has composure? On oh, my shoes. Minions. Probably gonna fail. What oh. strikes you about this gaunt man is not the stomach pain, or the cough, or the malnutrition. For a man who spent 44 years hidden in the urban wild. He is surprisingly okay. Indeed. He speaks fluidly. His movements are rapid, if erratic. His voice, despite the cough, is there. It is capable of expressing complicated ideas. Above all, he seems animated. And his eyes are still good after all this time. No cataracts? Animated by what? It's a mystery. This animation comes at a cost too. Erratic hand gestures, thought processes cut off like threads, as he just stares at the logs or the reeds. He also suffers mood swings, bubbling to the surface, unconstrained by his nervous system. Great leaps of emotion, from anger to grief, despair. Dementia? You've seen demented people before. This feels similar, yet different. When his thoughts move, they are lucid, keen even, not senile. Is it some kind of substance damage? Like he's addicted to something, not only the painkillers he's clearly on. Wouldn't a foul temper be a byproduct of his life? Perhaps, but his seems more than that. The inner turmoil takes unexpected turns, as if forced on him in a way. In summary, you sense some underlying neurological disorder. Mr. Dross, are you on some kind of psychoactive substance? No. I won't be stuffed full of shit like the rest of this city. He snaps out of staring through you. You said you take painkillers. Lieutenant follows your lead. I take them to cope with pain. The people of this city use painkillers. Because they have pain. Untreated illnesses. Not enough money for a greedy doctor. He is indeed very lucid at times. Hmm. It's not a downer. Rather, an upper. 
judging by his snaps. Are you on amphetamines? Like some kind of <laughs> decadent go. rock star. He doesn't dignify it with more of an answer. He takes a long time to say his lines. Mr. Rose, are you okay? How's your memory? No, I'm not okay. I shit blood, and I'm surrounded by insane people. He waves his hand, chasing something that's not there. There it is again. Erratic hand motions, bouts of rage, and the stomach thing too, of course. Interesting. Could it be a symptom of overdosing on something? Something even you have not tried? Keep your eyes peeled. One more time, Mr. Draws, the Colonel. We need to talk about you killing him. Pretty bourgeois law. <laughs> Ew. This is all you care about, right? The only thing in the world for you types. A drop of blood in the saliva. Tear into him again. Pile it on him. I didn't need your cooperation. I've got this. Show him the Trigon 446. We've done ballistics, point to the tower. The shot came from the island. I saw you poking around there, looking for evidence. You're damn diligent when it comes to dead fascies. Did you like the view? A jitter passes him. You had direct visibility. There are embrasures in the concrete, specifically meant for a top follower to use. And you had a long range rifle in your possession. The lieutenant softens his voice. You have been here a long time, Mr. Dross. Too long. You need medical aid. I'm ready to die. <coughs> I've done my part. The man interrupts him, then coughs. He's practically admitting to it. Dead fascists, for fascists, done his part. You said fascists. You admitting, you're admitting to killing him? It's the best interrupted line of sight into the window in all of Martinez. The view was perfect with a pair of binoculars I could have seen in the room. It's the best uninterrupted, uninterrupted line of sight into the window. Because it's a sniper's nest, you stupid fuck. Radio Gosh is right. You oh have gosh. worms in your brain. Another sudden twitch, then one more on his... Then one more on his right eye. Almost. He almost burst out there. Keep piling arguments. Anything. Come on, what am I forgetting? Hit yourself on the side of your head. Wait, here it comes. <laughs> the goddamn Maybells. The dried Maybells on Clasio's roof. Oh yes, my head hurts now. Oh yes. There were Maybells in the grass when you got here. They're revolutionary symbols from the war. Oh shit. Nowhere else, nowhere in all of Martinez have you seen them this spring. There were Maybells behind the victim's window. Shoot, show him the dried flower. Damn Maybells. The whole island is turning white with them. He looks at the blossoming field behind you. He seems tender suddenly, nostalgic even. A strange mood swing. So many this year too. The spring is coming. No, it's already here. Wash the filth away. I haven't seen these flowers anywhere in Martinez, only here. They blossom on the islets before. We fertilize them with our blood. Hezorexion <laughs> was snow white in May, before they ruined it. The coast, too, before they piled their containers on top of it, filled with broken, useless trash for fat. Fingered bourgeois children to play with. A young woman call, called Clasier. Ring any bells? These dried flowers were behind her window. Clasier. You know her, right? She had an intimate relations with the victim, the mercenary. With the victim. He turns his sight from the whitening field of flowers and falls silent. The muscles in his jaw twitch, a spasm. There is a small tremble. Looks like a smile. A crooked smile, yet isn't quite voluntary. He's about to burst. Almost. But you need one more. Just one. Or maybe two. I don't need your cooperation. I've got this. <laughs> Not a lot of guns around that use military-grade ammunition, are there? It's a real gun. Not like your little musketeer pistols. 
I've seen you prance around with those jumping hoops for the liberals. He points at the lieutenant's holster. You look like imbeciles. Why don't you ask them to give you real weapons? <laughs> Going against automatic rifles with these toy guns. Of course you got those boys killed. Dang. Damn, he saw you. He's watched it happen. So he saw you. Okay. So what? We Don't let it divert you. We saved a lot of them. Their leader Titus. We handled the situation. Stop changing the subject. We have the murder weapon. Point to it. You know what? You're right. I'm convinced this made the shot. Should we call it? Lieutenant looks at the weapon demonstratively. Dramatically asks, You think we have the murder weapon? <laughs> 4 4.46 jacketed ammunition. Modified for range. We have it. This is it. I'm calling it. We have the murder weapon. Good. The lieutenant takes out his notebook and draws a single line. This feels good, doesn't it? Tearing things up like this. When you have the murder weapon, you have the killer. Murder. The old man does not say more. He just glances into the reeds and then twitches once more. You know who he was. A coalition trained murderer. Armored and armed. He wasn't human. The blunt end of a hammer, dripping with blood. He was a rapist. I'm not saying he didn't deserve it. He was a killer, but he was still under the protection of the law. He was a soldier, too. He was a man. I don't know what to say. He was a man. Beating us to the ground, moaning with joy. You hounds get so far. When a company trained killer dies, I haven't seen you on this coast for 40 years. You know, maybe I should have killed one sooner. Got your attention. Now you stop beating druggies and prostitutes in your basement. Now you come to investigate. Not when they die by the hundreds. He looks at you dead in the eyes, pupils shaking. He breathes through his flared nostrils. This is it. Shot him. Shot him. Say shot him, not killed him. So you shot him. Oh, the inhumanity. One paramilitary less in Revachal. You can almost see him squeeze a tear out of his eye. His fists begin to tremble from anger. The lieutenant raises his right arm to hush you. Hush. He does not need to be pushed anymore. The ball is rolling. While the lieutenant listens, holding his breath. Hold your breath. I had them in my sights. Both of them. Him and the whore. I was breathing with them. In phase. And I pulled the trigger and flew on the air until I landed in his mouth. He begins to smile. I didn't think I had a shot like that in me anymore. I did. I saw him kneel there with his mouth full of death and that stupid look on his face. And his dick still in her. The smile quivers. Then what? Nothing. I went to sleep. Next morning there were Maybells everywhere. The world was white. Or what's left of it, anyway. My last spring here. I knew the fascists would come to avenge their own. And so they did. Mr. Dross, are you aware you're confessing to murder? Lieutenant Asa for a second of silence. Yes. A single word is all he gives. Damn, I have four skill points. Okay. And you were looking at them? The victim and a young woman having sex? Through the scope of your rifle that night? Before you shot him? Lieutenant takes out his notebook slowly, very slowly. The old man nods. We did it, boys! <laughs> Why? Because that's what they were doing. He shrugs and smacks his lips. The motive. 
This is where the motive is going to come from. You can coax it out of him. The lieutenant's preparing the ground. I don't understand. Do you, detective? I don't understand this part. He turns to you. Why were you looking at them that night? I'm always looking. He cocks his head to the side, then turns his eyes to the city. Another tremor passes his right side, lower in intensity. Are you always looking through the scope of a rifle? I'm just trying to understand. He explains. A rifle scope has the best magnification. <laughs> Definitely don't understand fully. Helps him see all the shit. And if you don't like it? You shoot it. Click. If it's the part of the shit you see. Then you pull the trigger? Yes. Think of it as a form of critique. He looks the lieutenant in the eye. You've got him going. Connect every little piece now. Wrap this up like a gift. What specifically did you not like about what you saw the night of the murder? Them. Fucking. I didn't like that. He looks at the charred wood. Well, didn't they do it a lot? So, is this the first time you saw them doing that? So you were jealous? Jealousy is a reactionary concept. I didn't like the Reaver enjoying himself. Drugged out, soothed in the arms of a young woman. I wanted him to die so he could not enjoy life anymore. I'd say that is jealousy. <laughs> and I wanted to see his head explode. That too. She should know better than to hold a child murderer between her thighs. I knew he'd be there for one more second, writhing. That's all it takes for the bullet to reach his head. Now that I think of it, I wasn't aiming for his mouth. I wanted his brains to spill out on her. But you can't have everything. He shrugs. This man has seen past her, like you did, and now he longs to see her covered in blood, to punish her. You wanted to punish her, so you killed him. How long have you been watching her? Since she came to Martinez, I saw her sneaking in the reeds early in the morning, behind the fell building. It was dark, still winter. She didn't have her skimpy outfit on then. Just a spot in the night, moving. Past the fell building on the coast? What was she doing there? Destroying her documents? Hiding something in the water. She had a fag after she'd done it. I was up in the ruins there. She couldn't see me, but I could see her, smoking. She was nervous, but not scared. And beautiful. What do you think she hid there? Her passport and tickets to Villiers. <coughs> and from there to Cachet Bru. So we stole it? This is the hidden buoy she told us about. You looked into it? After she was gone. He nods. Did you keep what was in it? When we found the submersible, it was empty. No. Why would I do that? I didn't need tickets to Villiers. I put them back. If I wanted to extort someone, I'd do better. This implies that he's thought about extorting her. Also, a little inconsistency here. He was surprised to hear her name, Clausia, before. Would he not have seen it on the documents? Are you sure? We checked the submersible. There was nothing in there. Why would I need that trash? I'm not going to Villiers. He looks to the reeds, confused. A strange confusion comes over him from time to time. Some kind of aberration of the nervous system. Okay. Did you continue watching her after this? I did. She had a face like an archipelago with those birthmarks. And a body hard and lean and bruised all over. Black and yellow. I could see she's taken a beating. 
I could see who she was, too. A spook. On the run. Revachal's the cloaker of capital now. All the bag men and arms dealers end up here to do drugs and have sex like animals. You could tell she was a spook from the documents? She had different color hair on the photo and glasses. Forged. Some sordid bourgeois affair. I heard about this kind of thing on the radio. He's setting it up for you. How did you see all this? The bruises that she was beaten? I'm not blind, am I? He shakes his silver head. How did you get close enough to see the bruises, Mr. Droves? I have my ways. A cracked smile appears on his dry lips. Did he assault her? Oh, wait, tell me. Not in this lifetime, Dwapt. <laughs> he waves you off with a cough, his thoughts elsewhere. On her. This one's gone. Make up somehow. Connect something else. Fast. You lost it. You're Shit. a bad detective. Lazy and bad. One little thing missed and I drown in anxiety. No, it's cool. I've already gotten them. I don't need to be perfect. No, it's not. Fix this now. Move on extra carefully. Be incredibly minute. You wanted to punish her, so you killed him. She practically breastfed that man. You wouldn't believe the things she let him do to her. He shakes his head and stares at the ashes. You stare at them too. In your mind, her innocent stay still turns to leaf. Airport bag in hand. Silks flowing in her wake. The dream. See you tomorrow, Harry. Her voice rings in the evening air. Burning. You saw through her, so did I. She deserved a good punishing. I hate women too, you know. I'm not like that. I don't think like that. Men are insane. Shake your head. Say nothing. The old man raises his gaze. Something glimmers in the corner of his black eye. A bitter taste on his tongue. You had feelings for that woman. There's... There's nothing to hold on to. Only this. It's, it's not enough. He sighs. The coals of his eyes glisten suddenly, like stones dripping with water. Is he crying? This dude is sick in the head. Man needs to feel something else. In this fight, it helps if you have your eye on something there. It's weakness, I know. There have been others? Yes, over the years. It's not unproletarian to feel something. Is that why you left the dried flowers behind her window? No. He starts to shake his head again of some flower on a withered stalk. Why then? I don't really know. I was there one night and she was crying, like a child, in the corner of her room on the floor, like she does sometimes. When was this? The day after I killed him. And you brought her Maybells? Yes. I don't know why I do the things I do anymore. You wanted to console her. You wanted to manipulate her. Maybe. I told you. I have holes in my brain now. I wouldn't just sit here waiting for you. He lowers his head and just stares at the logs. A sudden pang of rage. If you came ten years ago, I would have killed you. He wipes his eye. In the silence, the lieutenant draws a line in his notes. The Maybells? <laughs> One more down. Oh man. So in conclusion, it wasn't about him, it was about her. Her. He repeats, staring at the ashes and the reeds. There's a twitch in the corner of his eye. The lieutenant nods at you in acknowledgement. Jeez. Look how many skill points I have. <laughs> My god. That's it. Motive. We have it. Where is she, that Clasier? 
I haven't seen her there for days. The old man looks at you. She got away. We don't know where she is. She got away, but she let us here first. She figured someone was watching her from the sea fort. We arrested her. I'm not at liberty to say. I know she's gone. Locked up. Or on the run. She kept staring into the scope, you know. In the end, this last week, at the fort. Like she knew. You think she did? Like she knew I was here. It doesn't matter. He knew she knows. She was looking at the island, figuring it out. Day by day. Cigarette by cigarette. Well, this does make me feel a little better about not arresting her. We could get more. We've got him talking. The lieutenant uses the opportunity to tell you in a lowered voice. Who knows what he's seen and done over the years. You could get more out of him. He likes talking. He really likes talking. Enough. Take him in. Bend his arms behind his back and end this. Been looking at anything else you haven't liked? A tragic comedy. Druggies, prostitutes, and rentiers. He shakes to he shakes to life. A strange little engine seems to fire up in him again. It straightens his back. More specifically? Specifically, the whole city is a charnel house. Stripped clean and draped in neon. But Martinez, Martinez is the worst. He shakes his head in grave disgust. How come? Because of the racists. Everyone is a racist in Martinez. It's their favorite thing to do in the whole world. Listening to race-themed radio shows. In the ruins. In their lorry. He points inland. I don't know why this dude is on a moral high ground acting like he's so much better. Pump full of steroids and radio revachal 92. Race this, race that. It's all sanctioned by that social democratic union and the farce of a social democrat who runs it. Mr. Clare? Yes, the fly lava in his container. He let some nihilistic advertising yuppies erect a statue of Philippe III, a syphilitic murderer on the town square, to spit on the working class. Let him finish. Do not interrupt. Not since the serfs of ancient Pericarnassus has history produced a more inert social class than the Martinez proletariat. The rest of Revachal, at least pretends to rebuild these people still live in ruins intense like animals like those boom boom morons on the ice <laughs> a pity they didn't drown in that tent of theirs how dare you he keeps shaking his head with sorrow for the sight he missed that all the worst of them is the blood drenched sucreon on her yacht licking her lips the old whore's gone now. Her gun-toting porcelain men are dead. So, actually, no. The worst is that old cop parading around in his uniform, throwing balls all day. It's not enough that the racists and liberals are dancing on our graves. The old loyalist ghouls still parade the ruins, too. Dude, he's dead. Show a little respect, man. Every morning he's there, while the parasites he fought to protect are off in Ozon, or Quayamoran, or some other island they built their palaces on, feeding on drugs and having sex with their own children. Okay, then. That's all the rich really want. Sex with their own children. Throughout history, even the royal bloodline of the suzerain. It's all just an excuse for them to have sordid sex. At least that old cunt Frisell is now dead. I have other questions for you. We did good when we pushed him under the horse car. Until, in the 30s, those disco whores. 
He breathes in his his breath heavy with hatred. You cannot make out a single word. The disco whores are too much. Hatred shuts down his brain's language center, leaving only a nonsensical sputter. <clears throat> All right, I'm glad we talked about this. I think um, I think we should just it's all gone. arrest him now. We've been talking to him for like an hour. Isolif Lilianovich Dros, you are under arrest for the murder of Ellis Kortenier. What? But you said I would be taken to the... The old man's eyes filled with sudden, unexpected terror at the words. This terror is the sum of all the uncontrollable movements and mood swings he's been exhibiting. What do you think would happen, dude? Your wayfarer rights have been suspended. Information provided to the officers on the scene will be used against you by the prosecution. You will be given legal counsel within one week and must face court in 44 days. Do you understand? Do you understand? What? Kim, he's afraid. Do we give this guy any leniency? I don't think so. Do you understand, sir? No, I don't want to. I have to stay here. He looks at the reeds, eyes submerged in growing terror. He's sweating. Beads are forming on his forehead. Pupils are dilated too. Eyes getting blacker and blacker. Is he gonna have a heart attack? Your confirmation is not required, sir. Now on to the boat. Lieutenant turns to you. Wait. Perception. Perception. There it is again, to your north, as it has been since you came to the coast. The reeds whisper, stalks rubbing against each other. But then, in the middle of it... What? Something completely different. It sounds like a bow, very slowly being drawn against the strings of a violin. A very small violin, made of reeds and rushes. Is someone taking aim at us? Maybe there is room for three on the boat. And then it's gone, drowned out by the lieutenant's voice. Shh, Kim, do you hear that? What? What are you talking about? Is this... really us? The old man's voice drowns in a sudden gust of wind. What is happening? <laughs> Your skin crawls. Oh, he's like, huddling. Um, what? Oh my god! What the hell is that? A delicate tangle of arms and legs unfolds from the reeds, limb by limb, to then just stand there. Oh, what? Size like arms, please the Phasmid! The Phasmid! Oh my god, Lena was right! Oh my god! Oh my god. What is that? What oh. are you talking about? The old man looks at the reeds and you, what? I don't know what the hell that is. There's nothing there. He looks confused. The stick insect is over three meters Whoa. tall. It looks Whoa. straight at you with its tiny pinprick <laughs> eyes and its grotesquely small head. You feel your legs shaking under you and your gun hand move to your holster to grab the gun. There it is, I see it. I've finally gone insane. Put your head in your hands. There it is, I see it. See what exactly? A bug? Does not understand. Kim, can you see it? I can see it. <laughs> Four simple words. Thank God. <laughs> if he can see, then you're not insane. Oh, it's freaky. That's crazy. What that means. Lena was right. It's really there, spinning slowly, in <laughs> absolute silence. Its limbs long and slender. Be very, very careful. The lieutenant whispers and takes a step towards the giant anthropod. Bro! Oh. Auto save, okay. Hi. The 
creature stands on long stilt-like legs, antennae hanging from his head like a woman's hair, white and curled at the tips. It is no more than five steps away from you. Reed-like tufts stick out of its joints. As the insect moves its forearms, it produces a faint hiss, like a reel-to-reel -reel machine spinning after the tape breaks. The hiss is different from the strings you heard before. It says something else in a lower pitch. Oh god, I'm gonna fail this check. I've been passing a few of them. Listen carefully. You smell... What is that? I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> Lieutenant whispers back. You hear the familiar ring of his jacket, unzipping slowly, painstakingly slow. His camera! You glance over your shoulder. The lieutenant holds a piece of milled aluminium. He begins to pull it open extremely carefully. It's <laughs> the camera. Are you sure you won't scare it off? We need a photo. No one will believe us. He can use to, continues to pull the lens open. From the corner of your eye, you see a sudden cascade of motion ripple through the insect's limbs. A series of ultrasonic clicks fills your ear. That's crazy. I am palatable. Do not eat me. I am afraid. Uh, take the picture. With the sound of metal sliding against metal, the lieutenant like reveals kinda... the lens. The glass glints in his hand as he begins to slide in an ampoule. It's gonna scare it off. You see the insect turn to him, its mandible antennae reaching out. Its motions are quick, sudden. The ampoule will produce a loud hiss. You're right, it could scare it away. I need a better mother yeah. when it's not looking. I'll wait. I'm on standby, he thinks. <laughs> His hands sweaty around the machine. Oh, the spindling my God. mechanism turns itself back to you. Its antennae taking their measure of the air. Slowly. Say something to the insect. Quietly, like. Approach carefully. Quietly? You exist. A sudden chirrup fills the air. The walking stick moves its whole body. Limbs working independently of each other. Like the parts of a masterfully constructed machine. It moves just an inch closer to you. Or does it only feel like it does? Something in its body language has changed just slightly. We can't okay. just leave it standing there. We have to do something, detective. It could be... <sighs> could be connected somehow even. But I want to... You've never seen him get this excited. His voice is almost trembling. <laughs> Electrochemistry. All right, I'll... <laughs> yes! <laughs> Slowly, with your breath held, you oh take my God. two small steps toward the phasmid. The creature lets out a series of ultrasonic clicks that swarm around your head like <gasps> slaves. I can't believe I passed that one. Oh my god. I'm so happy I saved all of my skills. <laughs> like after, a sort of happiness. Oh my god. Hissing and clicking, it extends its mandible-like antennae to greet you. You're right below it now, looking up at the colossal chitin of its white limbs. The head of the creature is crowned by reeds, and its eyes are like small droplets of water. Raise your hands slowly. The insect stops its stridulation, seeming to observe you. Below its crown of reeds, little pinprick eyes detect motion, glittering. The world stands still around you. <laughs> I just remember the dude is in the fetal position over there, being like, I'm gonna get arrested. Meanwhile, we're like... Big bug. <laughs> Suddenly, there is silence. Ow, I just hit my foot. Okay. No. Stop. Be afraid. Please don't scare him off. Raise the other hand, too. As you do, the invertebrate comes to life. Its limbs <sighs> moving independent of each other, as if each has a mind of its own. They are white, like stalks of porcelain, knitting above you, praying to you. 
Don't pray to me, I'm nothing. The reed creature does not stop its stridulations. It towers above you, parting the reeds it emerged from. Tuft-like structures still rustle on its joints. Perhaps it is preparing to eat its <sighs> god. <laughs> this is insane. Hello, I'm Harry. I don't really know who I am. No reply. A total ancient silence comes from its mouth, along with what appears to be some kind of foam. The stridulations of its limbs continue all around you. Look more closely. You were right. Little bubbles form on the mouth parts of the creature, on its segmented lower lip. It looks to be foaming, slowly. The foam is white, then yellowish. The faintest smell, like you've never felt before. Like burnt roses. Kim, it's foaming. Careful. It may be poisonous. The tenant watches you apprehensively. The foam slowly turns a darker shade, like burnt caramel. Maybe it is trying to kill me. insect moves its mouth parts, masticating. The little bubbles begin to burst, one by one, letting out that same smell, like summer burning. Tell me, what are you doing? I exist. <laughs> I'm definitely failing the next check. I exist too. Tell me what is like for you. Fire burning. It's wunderbar. I'm ill. If I tell you what will happen. Then I will tell you what is like for me. For me, it's fire burning. Fire? Where? Inside. In the city all around, it's going down. On the horizon, pale fire. This thing we're both sensing is coming to an end. That is your problem. Nothing ever ends for me. There is only room for two, maybe three pictures in my mind. For me, it is a series of half-lit images. A kind of darkness being intruded upon. Transient. Team. Sounds like Nina. Nia. <laughs> Intrude upon by what? Shapes of plants and animals. And internal sensations. A swarm of sounds. Tiny vibrations on the inside of my forearms. All speak of complexities totally beyond my understanding. I am at the end of an era funnel. Waitress. So light, it only feels like something to be me. In truth, perhaps I'm nothing. I certainly do not have a soul. And if I did, it would never burn. You're the type of animal I would like to be. I'm glad to be me, an incredibly sensitive instrument. Few of us can begin to imagine the horror of you. It's all of creation reflected in your foreplay. It must be like the highest of hells, a kaleidoscope of fire and writhing glass. Eternal damnation. Even when you're sleeping, and when you wake, you carry it around on your neck. With eyes open that cannot help but swallow more behind the mirror. I feel great. Mute empathy for you. It was... it's hell. I changed my mind. I want to be you. It was very disorienting at first, but I'm keeping my shit together. That must be incredibly hard. <laughs> the arthropods are in silent and meaningless all of you. Know that we're watching. When you're tired, when the vision spins out of control, the insects will be looking on, rooting for you. Thank you, Fastman. And when you fall, we will come to raise you up. But from you, banner-like. Blossom from you and carry you apart in a sky funeral, in honor of your passing. But not me, because I'm just a leaf eater. Detective. <laughs> Arriving. On the scene. <laughs> I am a detective. So am I. I was born to detect sucrose rewards and semiochemicals. chemicals. What were you born to detect? Also that. The killer. I was born to detect you. The killer. He's in a bad state. Deteriorating fast now. He thinks I am beneficial to him. 
but I am not. I only quicken his deterioration. You're destroying him? Very slowly. And only because he won't go away. It is meant to keep them from noticing me, to interfere with the pictures in their heads. But he has looked at me for too long, and I am destroying him. Is this a dream? What is happening? No. You are awake. I am real. Light is forming me. This is real. Where does this come from, all this around us, the world? Not even the birds know that. Not even the water lily. We need to know. Perhaps it's sent to us by God, a god? Then all we can do is beat our fists against it, day after day, with no answer. You can also eat it. <laughs> if he's a leaf, you can put it in your mouth. Yum yum. Or eat. <laughs> That's so cute. What exactly are you? I am an all-known species of the order Phantasmodia, endemic to the Insolentia Isuma. For the last 350 years, I have hidden in plain sight. Masquerading as the reeds, molting, calming myself, unfolding at night to play with trash bins and boys. It may have unknown, dangerous biochemical characteristics that help it maintain its camouflage. No one unnoticed by the fur settlers and the land surveyors of the Susserin. Also, by the soldiers of the revolution and the officials of the occupation. Even the Semenese Islanders who came here first, but did not stay, have not seen me. I have stayed hidden through four forms of government and two scientific revolutions Jeez. until I was accidentally discovered by a detective of the cities of Malaysia in Revolution, district of Martinez, March 51. Are you poisonous? Yes. I do not have a star to display. So I use a newer degenerative element to aid in camouflage. Do not worry. It is only destructive over long periods of time. The deserter. He's been here for a long time. <laughs> That's insane. No. You are. The moral of our encounter <laughs> is, I am a relatively medium life form. Well, it is you who are a total extreme madness. A volatile senior nerve system Ow. ominously new to the planet. So since the deserter has been here a long time, this is what's been slowly killing him? The pale too came with you. No one remembers it before you. The Nidarians do not. The radially symmetrics do not. There is an almost unanimous agreement between the birds and the plants that you are going to destroy us all. Wait, what is the pale? It is a nervous shadow cast into the world by you, eating away at reality. A great, unnatural territory. Its advent coincides with the arrival of the human mind. I don't have that kind of power. You are a violent and irrepressible miracle. The vacuum of cosmos and the stars burning in it are afraid of you. Give me enough time, you will wipe us all out and replace us with nothing. Just by accident. How? We suspect it will be something like the oxygen holocaust that wiped out anaerobic life 2.6 billion years ago when organisms first started breathing. Only much worse. Instead of air, you exhale thoughts. There are no trees that eat thoughts. I don't want to know. Also, very, very dangerous. <laughs> Kim, am I having a violent epileptic seizure? <laughs> it doesn't look like that, no. What does it look like? You're just staring at it. He whispers. Then I think I'm having a vision about the final fate of mankind. Okay. Is it somehow related to the case? Sort of. No, I told you what it's about. Our fate. The case? The case is meaningless compared to this. Laugh nervously. I have totally transcended the case. Sort of. I think we should take the picture, and then you should back away from the unstudied species. Okay, I had to say goodbye for now. I have no more thoughts, that was all. No, there is one more. Is there? No, there are no more thoughts. Out of all the creatures I've met, you are the kindest. You are the scariest, you are the most beautiful. You're the kindest. 
Thank you. I also have one more thing to say to you before you go. That woman. Turn from the ruin. Turn and go forward. For all mankind. Does she mean my ex-wife or Clausier? <laughs> what woman? You cannot lie to me. Behind you, it smells of fires. So awfully far you were prepared to go in her presence. And it. I will. She was held on earth. It doesn't take a three meter stick insect to tell you that. Okay, Kim, take the picture. Okay. <laughs> With a slow ring of metal, the lieutenant slides the lens open and raises it, to, raises it to eye level. We can send it to Lena! There is no change in the insect's motion while it's being aimed by the camera. It remains fixated on you. In three. If it moves, you jump back. I'll shoot. Here we go. <laughs> no, don't shoot it. Three, two, one. Lieutenant whispers. His voice is tense. The shrill flash of the camera oh! <laughs> cuts the air like the blade of a sword. The phasmid freezes in its bright light. Head turned toward the lieutenant, hypnotized by the flash. It stands frozen before you. That is so cool. That is so cool. I got it. You hear the lieutenant whisper as the creature's shape develops onto photo paper in his hand. A polychrome ghost of white streaks against the reason sky. And you as a shadow before it. Slowly reach out and touch the creature's whisker. Carefully pet its scythe-like forearm. Slowly reach out. The antennae hang from a great height. With your hand shaking, you barely touch the tip of the left whisker. <laughs> On contact, the kiting curls into a spiral, like the tip of a poison ivy. Its touch on your fingertip feels cold, ticklish. The sensation <laughs> is electrifying, resounding through your body. It is surprisingly delicate, the curly end of the whisker, like a young bine. It's even a bit wet. Looks like someone's got hurt in a fight. This antennae is much Aww. smaller than the other one. Be careful, detective. It's moving. Look at your finger. You were right. It glistens with some <laughs> kind of moisture. The creature in front of you stays frozen. Carefully pet its scythe-like forearm. The limb before you is incredibly light. Like eggshell. It's much lighter than a reed. You feel a soft push could tip the creature over. <laughs> it's hollow exoskeleton collapsing. Run your hand up the slender limb higher. A small shudder passes the creature's arm. High above you, its black pearl eyes still glisten, mesmerized by the light passing its nervous system. It said it was poisonous, so I think I'm not going to lick it. We got it. Another shudder pulses through the creature's limbs. It jolts back to life, like a record continuing where it left off in a swaying praying motion. Even the small black pearls of its eyes do not stray from you. Disengage slowly. As you're turning away, the phasmid mirrors your movements, stepping on the water, the long limbs carrying its feather weight without breaking its surface. Dang. Dang, oh my camera's about to die, but dang! <laughs> Bro. And just like that, it's gone. Skating away across the sea's calm mirror like a skipping stone, leaving nothing but circles on the water. <gasps> and something under it, in the place it stood, bobbing there among the reeds, a collection of items. It's gone. Lieutenant looks north with his hands raised to his brow. Oh shit. Apparently, yes. Like a water strider. Only... I've never seen anything like that in my life. I asked, can I... It can walk on water. Okay. He shakes his head with amazement. What's that in the reeds? Looks like a nest of some sort. We should have a look. <laughs> the murder... Literally, the murderer is right behind us. What? 
The old man behind you repeats suddenly. He puts his hand again into the ash. It's dirty and black. In some kind of strange, semi-catatonic state. I think so. Our suspect is not looking so good. We need to check on him. Yeah, but can we do this first? What's in here? Whoa! Fairweather T-500 helmet. Scope rifle. Oh, Classy's passport? Holy shit. Okay, we have a lot. What? Triagong 446. $70? Bolt action 46. Oh, wait, no. This was the one that we got from him. Okay. Triagong is the poor man's sniper rifle. While not the most reliable of firearms, it is relatively precise due to the very manageable recoil, thus allowing the shooter to take multiple consecutive sh shots fast. This particular piece is missing the scope, though. Whoa. A common 30 millimeter sniper scope attached. Oh, attachable to any bolt action 46. 4.46 caliber. It uses an older style non dotted range fighter. <laughs> rage finding reticle. Seaweed is still stuck on the lens and has suffered water damage from its time in the phasmids dowry. That must be what goes on there. Evidence. Clausier's passport. This well-traveled passport with visa stamped in it is issued by the Republic of Aranye. You found it in the phasmids nest on the island. You can open it for more details. I will do that in a second. I still got this. Dang! That's like the little bug guy that we killed. <laughs> this monstrous looking bug eyed ceramic helmet is a, was in the phasmus nest. It still has some reeds sticking out of it and it smells of seawater, but it's otherwise wearable, if not exactly comfortable. Putting it on feels scary somehow. Now let's take that off. <laughs> okay. Can we also look at the picture? Or did he keep it? I guess he kept it. Okay, I'm so sorry to leave it off here, but I'm actually running out of time today to film. This episode has been so long, so long. I think I've played for like three hours. Holy shit, I need to... Oh my god. This guy talked so much. So much. Like, I... I don't know. The way he talked kind of was bugging me because he just talked so slowly. But other than that, we got him to confess and it turns out he is the murderer. And he did it not really out of anything against Ellis, but more so against Clause. And it seemed like he was jealous um, for the man. I don't know. There's a lot to think about. We also ran into our ex-wife, who um, was had the appearance of Dolores Day, but it was obvious that it was just sort of a front. But I did pass a lot of checks in this episode. One that I didn't necessarily wish I passed was the one where I kissed her. I feel like that was too much um, and definitely kind of assault because <laughs> it's obvious she didn't want to be kissed and I did it without asking her and it just, it feels kind of icky. So I wish I didn't do that, but you know, and she's pregnant. She's seeing someone else. So but holy shit, we saw the fast mid. I can't believe that was a red check and you could have failed it. So thank God I saved up those skill points and I was able to use them all there. I know I used up a lot this episode, but damn, that was so cool. And we got a picture of it. So now we can send it to Lena and show them that their research has actually been really meaningful. And just because they haven't found it doesn't mean anything actually exists. I can't wait to continue this game in the next episode, but I don't know how much more is left. I played for a long time this time around, so we'll see. Anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, leave a like or subscribe if you're new, because I'd love to have you stick around and watch and play some video games. That is all for today. I will see you in the next episode. Goodbye.